after years of an all-encompassing presidency. Officials said nearly a decade after American officials pushed a constitution that enshrined near dictatorial powers for the president, it is a tacit admission that changing to a more parliamentary system, a fraught undertaking at any time, is now seen as crucial to holding the country together after years of mounting political crisis and ethnic and factional hostilities. The change was a central goal for Abdullah Abdullah, who has brought the entire political system to the brink with accusations of rampant fraud and threats to form a breakaway government, according to officials who were close to the negotiations. They spoke on the condition of anonymity because the details had not yet been worked out. The candidate, who has declared the president after a complete vote audit in the coming weeks, would then appoint either the runner-up or that candidate's nominee to become a chief executive for the government, with powers to be agreed on later. Then, in the following two or three years, the constitution would be amended to create a parliamentary democracy with a prime minister as a head of the government and a president as the head of state. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Opening a wallet is quick and easy. And for merchants, there are no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of transactions. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Antiwar.com reports, as ISIS continues to expand its control over the Deir Ezzur province in eastern Syria, they have turned their focus on oil fields and on expelling rival factions from the provincial capital. Some of the fighters chose to defect to ISIS outright, though others were killed or chased off. The local leader for al-Qaeda's Jabhat al-Nusra was slain, and photos of his body were posted online. The purge from Deir Ezzur means an influx of fighters into the area around Dira at the Jordan border, though it is unclear if this will have any impact on the ongoing fighting in that area. Rebels confirm that ISIS is now in control of virtually the whole of Deir Ezzur province, including all oil fields, though they have still not yet taken the Syrian military airfield in that area. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Big tech news this week as Microsoft has unveiled its new generation Xbox One. Designers say the console's revolutionary new voice command feature makes it easier than ever for the Xbox to control its users. According to Microsoft spokesman Don Matrick, quote, the Xbox One is programmed with a host of simple voice commands that you will respond to instantly. In addition to phrases like jump, shoot, and insert game disc, users will also understand more complicated instructions like download Call of Duty update or come into the room and turn on Xbox. The Xbox One tells us what games to play, what music to listen to, what shows to watch. Watch TV. And with that simple command, I'm watching live TV. The new Xbox's high-tech sensors can also detect your expression and tell when you're looking away from the television. Andy, look back at the TV. Microsoft says the new Xbox can also command you using your smartphone or tablet. TechBuzz is raving, quote, it's the immersive obedience experience we've been waiting for. This is the Onion News Network. Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want. All you have to do is dial toll free to 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. With you tonight is Ian here. And the wise janitor, Jenny Ray. Always good to have you here, Johnny Ray. Mark Edge, our normal co host, is uh, at his fireman's thing tonight. So we probably won't be hearing from him, but plenty of time for your calls and thoughts about whatever you'd like to discuss. Uh, some not so good news for fans of Uber, the ride sharing service, very popular ride sharing service. I've got an update on their continued saga in multiple fronts. They continue to fight against uh, old, outdated taxi cab and limousine regulations right. that make life very difficult for them. We can give you an update on their situation. Of course, your calls are welcome. And uh, the criminalization of parenthood, I teased this one last night, 
and we never really uh, got to it. So I, I would like to get to that. Plus, Johnny Ray, you want to talk about voting and the I guess the positives and the negatives? Yeah, there's a philosophical opinion piece that I read yesterday at my favorite libertarian aggregating news site that I brought in to share with all of us. So you can, of course, take control of the airwaves here. We've also got Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm, so feel free to reach out in the ways that you want. Uh, this is actually an article from Radley Balco, who uh, used to work for Reason. I don't know if he still does, but he's now working over the Washington Post. The police state expert. He's great at covering uh, the rise of the police state. I mean, it's it's a terrible topic to have to read about, but as far as people that are covering it in depth, Radley Balco is one of them. He's one of the guy. He's the guy who brought the forty thousand number, forty thousand police raids uh, per year. He brought that number forward, so he's been doing some really great work. He says a couple of the themes we explore here at The Watch, that's the name of his uh, column at The Washington Post, are the increasing criminalization of just about everything and the use of the criminal justice system to address problems that were once and better handled by families, friends, communities, and other institutions. A few examples from recent headlines show uh, those themes intersecting with parenthood. The first story comes from South Carolina, where a mother was jailed and charged with unlawful conduct for a ch- uh, toward a child for leaving her nine-year-old daughter alone to play in a park. Lenore Skenazi of Free Range Kids comments, Here are the facts. Deborah Harrell works at McDonald's in North Augusta, South Carolina. For most of the summer, her daughter had stayed there with her, playing on a laptop that Harrell had scrounged up the money to purchase. McDonald's does have free Wi-Fi. Sadly, the Harold home was robbed and the laptop stolen, so the girl asked of her uh, asked her mother if she could be dropped off at the park to play instead. Harold said yes. She gave her daughter a cell phone. The girl went to the park, a place so popular that at any given time there are about 40 kids frolicking for two days in a row. That's how all the easier to pick one off, Ian. I don't know about that, Johnny Ray. There were swings, a splash pad, and shade. On her third day at the park. An adult asked the girl where her mother was. At work, the daughter replied. The shocked adult called the police. Authorities declared the girl abandoned and proceeded to arrest the mother. Whoa. I see where this is going, Ian, and I... um It's it's awful, the the infantilizing influence of the state. You know, they, they... Children, everyone learns by making mistakes, and when you try and protect... People from the world, like the dangerous environs of the playground, Mm -hmm. you stunt their growth. When should a child be allowed uh, his or her own volition to go off into the world? Obviously, this uh, girl was uh, comfortable with the idea of going away from mom and going to the playground. She wasn't scared uh, about this. She was there more than one day in a row. And uh, is there an arbitrary age, or should it be when the child's ready, when they're ready to strike out uh, on their own a little bit? You know, Of course it should be when the child is ready, because each child will be different. Right. That's I, how I feel about it. Now, you said the girl was nine years old? That's correct, yes. I, I remember when I was eight, we were. it was 1985. Mm-hmm. We were just moving to Asheville, North Carolina, and I remember those days, and I was in the just going into the second grade. I was young, but... I was permitted to to move around and explore my neighborhood and so forth with my friends. Absolutely. I remember being, I think, as young as seven when I started coming home to an empty house uh, mm-hmm. with my parents both at work. They you know, trusted me with a key at that point, and you know, I was able to come in after school, and there would have been nothing at all preventing me from going out and you know, going down to my friend's house to play or something like that, and, and then the two of us roaming about wherever we might. Those trails in the woods around... Um uh, around Red Oak and Asheville are still in my dreams today. Because oh, really? Of you spent so much time there. Yeah. So that's not, of course, the only story. Uh, Balco continues. We could also lump this one in with a third theme, the criminalization of poverty. The next very similar story comes from Blanchester, Ohio. What started out as a normal Sunday morning for Jeffrey Williamson of Blanchester, Ohio, turned into a nightmare when police officers showed up to his front door and arrested him in front of his family. His crime? Child endangerment, as the authorities described it, because his son skipped church to go play with friends. Boy, I can't tell you how many times I skipped church to go do anything else. I never skipped church because church was uncommon. For you, for your family. So if we were going, then my absence definitely would have been noted. 
He now faces up to six months in jail. According to Williamson, the local Woodville Baptist Church sends a van to his neighborhood twice a week to offer free transportation to those interested in attending services. Williams' children or Williamson's children ride in the van regularly on Wednesdays and Sundays, and this morning was no different as his eight-year-old son Justin and siblings said goodbye to their father and left their house to board the van. One problem, Justin skipped church and went to play instead. The young boy stayed in the neighborhood to play with friends and then later ended up the local family dollar store down the road. After police officers were called to the store by a customer who recognized Justin, they took him back to his neighborhood where they proceeded to arrest his father for child endangerment. I guess they didn't know the whole story about the the van or did the I, child tell them? I don't know what the motivation was for these people, whoever they were, to call the police on this young man. Or maybe they thought he was lost or something like that, but that still wouldn't make sense. If they knew who he was, why wouldn't they just go talk to him? Hey, hey, Justin, uh, what are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be at church with, you know, your family? Talk to the kid. I mean... That's that's not illegal, you know. You can you can still talk to somebody in in public. To to call the police seems like a huge jump, a huge leap to uh, to calling in a, a very dangerous group of people when there's no reason for it. There was no indicator that the boy was being harmed or was you know at, at the side of a kidnapper or something like that. The state bi- enables these busybodies, Ian. They don't have to do the research or the it's work. Scary. They, they could have called the child's grandfather, and that really would have shamed the father. But they 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 had one phone call to make, only the police, because it's a uh, it's easier for it's them. It's so scary. It's it's. I guess it is easier because you don't have to involve yourself. You are involving yourself in that you're the one who is the. Uh, the creator of this, the conflict, the, the bringing of the police is responsible to uh, you if you make that call. And you don't have to do that. There are other options. But those other options involve being more involved, I guess. Uh, not this disinterested party on a cell phone standing in the corner, but actually somebody who would take part in what the situation was. Yeah, you, have, you actually have to to relate to another human being, which is tough for some people. Williamson, uh, the dad, recounted his interaction with the police officer, stating, The next thing you know, he comes up to me and he says, You're under arrest. My kids start crying their eyes out, wondering why I'm getting arrested. To make matters worse, as a result of local news coverage of the event, Williamson was fired from his job and remained unemployed for a period of time. Also not an uncommon story. In a lot of cases, you can just get arrested, and that's reason enough for a company to let you go. And who knows how long he'd, you know, he'd been working at that, uh, that establishment. It doesn't. In a lot of cases, it doesn't matter. People will take a criminal charge, and they'll presume that it's true because, well, the police wouldn't arrest somebody who's innocent, would they? And they'll just jump, jump, jump to the conclusion, and they'll just decide, well, we'd rather not have this negative publicity associated with uh, this company, so sorry, Mr. Williamson, we're going to have to let you go. Public sentiment has changed in our lives about the police because of the internet and the accountability of changed, the public surveillance. Changed against the police, you mean? Changed for, no, y- yes, against. We'll come back with more. You can share your thoughts. 855-450-FREE. It's Free Talk Live. Joint supplement. You know this is great for your joints. It even has benefits to help increase your mobility and flexibility. But the joint supplements of today are sadly incomplete because they don't give you the joint relief you're looking for. Until now, introducing the complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. It's the number one selling joint supplement at GNC. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-608-9424. Instaflex provides powerful, effective joint relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. Prove it to yourself by calling now for your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and CVS. But you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-608-9424. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample. 1-800-608-9424. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? 
For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Stouffer's, helping bring your family together with wholesome dinner options, even on the busiest of nights. Find dinner table ideas to bring your family together at letsfixdinner.com. To get kids involved in dinnertime conversation, ask specific questions, not broad ones. Instead of what happened today at school, try what was the best thing that happened today. The more specific you are, the more they'll have to say. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves toll-free at 855-453. That's 855 450 Three seven three three. We have Skype. Skype on into the show. Username there is lrn.fm. And, of course, you can reach us online. We're at freetalklive.com. Something else you can do online is go and get yourself some Bitcoins. You've been thinking about it, I'm sure, as the more you hear about Bitcoin, the more exciting it has to be getting with new companies picking up and running with Bitcoin and getting excited on their own volition. We've got, of course, Overstock.com. That's kind of old news at this point. That was around the beginning of this year. More recent news, Dish Networks expecting to accept Bitcoin later on this year. They've officially announced that. Uh, Tiger Direct came on earlier this year. Also, Newegg is a recent addition. We've long been uh, partnered with uh, kind of like an affiliate sales position with Newegg. You can go to shop.freetalklive.com to do your Newegg shopping through our links there. Now, I don't know if we get commission if you buy things with Bitcoin at Newegg, but you can buy things with Bitcoin at Newegg, so feel free to go and do that. Uh, Hustler.com, the most recent news, they're now accepting Bitcoin and Dogecoin and Litecoin all at Hustler.com, which is amazing. And you can actually get Dogecoin, Litecoin, and Bitcoin, as well as uh, Blackcoin and Darkcoin through Expresscoin.com. Uh, it's very easy, and they really care about customer service. They're looking to meet your needs. You can get cryptocurrencies with money order, check, or wire transfer. Plus, you can now deposit cash at uh, shared branching credit unions. So your credit union, the credit union has to have shared branching. Although I said your, it doesn't have to be yours. It just has to be a credit union with shared branching. You go deposit the cash, and then uh, after a little while, you'll get some bitcoins. I think it's usually at least um, sometime around a business day or so. So check it out. 
Rakuten in Japan is the latest uh, news um, about Bitcoin and, and different places that they're going to be taking well, it. Is, is that a company? It's uh, it's Japanese, and I just got it. Um, uh, I, I don't. Maybe it's an eBay sort of a thing. You better let me look at it a okay. bit more. Expresscoin.com. It's this is an international currency. Bitcoin. It's very exciting. So go and get yours at Expresscoin.com. If you're new to Bitcoin. Check out weusecoins.com to learn more, kind of learn the basics about what it is. We continue with a piece at the Washington Post by Radley Balco about criminalizing parenting. Uh, I got a mom who's been arrested for allowing her daughter to play in the park unsupervised around other kids, by the way. It's not like it was she was all alone in the park, but even if she was, again, she was okay with it. Her mom was uh, was okay with it. You've also got a dad who's arrested because his uh, his son... <laughs> There's a dog in the background here. He's barking in her sleep. <laughs> she is. Anyway, She's a rabbit. <laughs> six She's months protecting you, probably. Dad is facing up to six months in jail over this because his son skipped church to go play with his friends. There's more. Go to Tennessee, the most recent state to make it a felony to use illicit substances while pregnant. A Tennessee woman is the first to be charged under a new state law that specifically makes it a crime to take drugs while pregnant, calling it assault. Mallory Loyola, age 26, was arrested this week after both she and a newborn infant tested positive for meth, according to ABC News affiliate WATE in Knoxville. Loyola is the first person in the state to be prosecuted for the offense. The law, which just went into effect earlier this month, allows a woman to be prosecuted for assault for the illegal use of a narcotic drug while pregnant if her infant is harmed or addicted to the drug. Well, I think if you believe in the existence of, if you believe in the role of the police, then you have to be okay with this. And insofar as that goes, I am. You're okay with being char- someone being, being charged, charged with, with assault, assault for smoking meth while they're pregnant. That's interesting. What about pot? Um, pot. I. Um, sorry about I, that. <laughs> We're having technical difficulties here. <laughs> I ahead. personally would disagree with it, and and I, I think that uh, highlights why it's it's best. It would you would be disagree better, with the smoking of pot. I wouldn't consider that to be assault on an, uh, the unborn. Why would you consider smoking meth to be an assault on the unborn? Is there meth any is evidence? Meth is so much more potent. Is there any evidence that it's it does anything also, to the children? The crack baby thing was nonsense. I have no idea. Well, I'm telling you, the uh, the studies done after the fact here, you know, you remember the 80s crack baby scare? Sure, yeah. Uh, it was nonsense. There's no evidence behind it whatsoever. It was basically speculation and uh, pseudoscience. So, I mean, if you want to look into it, there's there's information. Yeah, I remember they... you. I remember you guys bringing that up. And I suppose if the empirical data didn't show to me that meth was an assault on the unborn, then I couldn't go along with it. I couldn't go along with prosecuting somebody for assault. Now, I actually kind of agree with you on this one, Johnny Ray. I think that. Uh, that how you're treated in the womb should be something that could be actionable later on down the line. Just like I think that a baby that is circumcised should be able to take action against uh, parents later on, you know, when they become an adult for basically mutilating the, their uh, their child mm-hmm. against its will. I think, uh, you, you know, the baby's too young to have a decision made like that for it. This would be a, a good case for, you know, the, the concept of a micro governments or free association with your own government a market in governments because you know government. some people could would be okay in a society where someone was prosecuted for smoking meth um, and assaulting their 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 child thusly uh, and then but, but at think, the same time they wouldn't feel that way about marijuana and those kind of people could could get together if they wanted to I think that's true and I think that ultimately you should be you should have to prove some kind of damage you should have to be you should be required to link certain behavior to a certain damage because otherwise you know maybe uh, you know maybe uh, sorry <laughs> i'm not doing that <laughs> we've got some technical things going on behind the scenes with our uh, our board operator there thank you for uh, by the way thank you to uh, genesis communications network for their excellent production services uh we do appreciate that uh, we're just trying to iron things out um so anyway back to the story here this lady is uh, she's in trouble for allegedly smoking meth but again, there needs to be proof, I think, that whatever it was that was done was what caused whatever the circumstance, right? So, like, you know, we know about fetal alcohol syndrome. That's a possibility, you know, that somebody should be able to take action on. But uh, other things, obviously, there's a chance that your baby's going to come out messed up. Something's going to be wrong. 
and maybe or maybe it wasn't connected to some sort of chemical use of the mother during pregnancy. I think you'd have a tough time in some cases connecting certain things, but maybe in others it would be a more definite connection. Regardless, uh, according to B uh, Balco at WashingtonPost.com, the story is obviously a little different than the others, but if the law and arrest dissuade other pregnant addicts from getting help, the consequences could be quite severe. That's a good point. Meaning that if there's a woman who is addicted to drugs and she's pregnant, because just because you get pregnant doesn't mean your drug addiction is going to go away magically. Uh, if she's pregnant, she's addicted to drugs and she wants to get help, then there's a good chance she could be turned in. And, and or she could be afraid that she'll be turned in, which is not an unreasonable thing for a paranoid drug user to believe. Yep. And so therefore she would not seek the help. So therefore she would continue smoking whatever it is she was smoking or drinking because she doesn't go and get, she's not feeling like she can go and get the help that she needs. That's tragic. Yeah. What she needs is to be able to open up to a doctor about it and get the right medical advice. What, what happens to a child if a mother starts going through heroin withdrawal? Um, I, I guess it's not good for the child. It but might be hard for the child to find food to eat if mom is uh, withdrawing from heroin. I mean, mom might just be focused on the withdrawal rather than anything else in her life. I mean, an unborn, the unborn. Oh, yeah, good question. Toll-free number tonight is 855-453-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. A little bit more about the criminalization of parenting. And, you know, if somebody's doing something wrong with their kids, I think it's okay to say something, but to put them in a jail cell, there's a tough one. You've been lied to. Lied to by corrupt Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, and I want to give you a free copy of my Inc. Magazine best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire, because Wall Street's 401k and other investment plans have failed millions of Americans. After losing 35% in my IRA in the crash several years ago, I said enough. Since then, I've discovered an IRS-approved way to safely grow my money up to 12 to even 17%, cut taxes dramatically, but also have my money protected when the next crash comes. Call now to talk with a specialist to discover this little-known strategy to potentially build a million-dollar tax-free retirement income, get potential 12 to 17% returns, and never lose when the next crash hits. Call 888-885-8820 and discover this tool that people like Walt Disney and J.C. Penney used to safely grow rich. Plus, get one of just 97 free books left. We even cover shipping and handling. Call 888-885-8820. 888-885-8820. Again, that's 888-885-8820. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas. Of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. 
You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free here and bring up anything that you want. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features we share with you there. We give them all away. You can create the content right on the front page of the website. Submit links from around the web, whatever you think is interesting, fun, outrageous, exciting. You submit it. It appears on our site. Other listeners can then vote on them. You vote them up if you like, down if you don't. It's all based on a Reddit-based system, so you need to have a Reddit account, which is free, and a Free Talk Live account. You link them together in a very simple process, and Free Talk Live uh, will be a good uh, good site for you to get interactive with us and other listeners upon. We sure do appreciate that you do at freetalklive.com. Passportsforbitcoin.com is where you want to go if you want to learn about how to get a second passport or to even renounce your citizenship. Last year was an all-time record for people renouncing U.S. citizenship, but it's done all over the world. Whether it's governmental intrusion on privacy, protest against foreign policy, to protect your wealth, avoid pointless regulations, onerous taxation, or as a refuge... You might want to get a second passport or even change your citizenship. Check out the St. Kitts program at PassportsForBitcoin.com. So clearly they take Bitcoin. That's yet another way that Bitcoins can offer you more freedom. PassportsForBitcoin.com. And speaking of Bitcoin, Johnny Ray, you did a little bit of research. Uh, the Rakuten, it is a name I have heard of, but that is all. I don't know what it is. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is from... It, it is um, like Amazon. It is... Um... Like a Japanese Amazon? Yes, like a Japanese Amazon. From the Tokyo Morning Edition, CEO Mikitani forecasts Rakuten to implement Bitcoin. In a speech, awesome. In this a, is fresh news? Is breaking? I mean, how new is this? I think it's from yesterday. Okay. In a speech given in Fukuoka City on the 14th. Now, Ian, that, that word rendered uh, in English characters begins with an F, but the, the closest noise phonetically that the Japanese have to an F, they actually blow through pursed lips. So instead of saying Fuji, you would say Fuji, like ah. that. Now so, you know this because you spent a couple years in Okinawa, correct? Correct. Excellent. The CEO of Rakuten, Hiroshi Mikitani, said among other things that the internet revolution is accelerating this year, and I imagine that sooner or later Rakuten will start accepting money in the form of Bitcoin. Mm. The speech was directed at merchants who operate on the internet-based virtual Rakuten Marketplace. CEO Mikitani indicated as his reason for forecasting the implementation of Bitcoin that, quote, it is increasingly the case that countries with unstable economies are able to achieve greater security with Bitcoin versus their own currencies. Somebody else was saying that, uh, that Rakuten was sixth behind Facebook, somebody on Reddit hmm. was saying that they were sixth wow. behind, behind Facebook in uh, terms of revenues. Furthermore, with regard to the potential of the Internet, Mikitani said that all forms of transacting will come into play, not just watching, reading, and buying. What functions existing things perform will be redefined, and new services will emerge rapidly. As an example, he discussed the possibility of services which allow you to lend out your own room to people in lieu of a hotel room using Facebook as an informational basis of trust. And that kind of relates to that uh, Uber situation that you were talking about. Yeah, we can talk more about Uber coming up here in a moment. Uh, Radley Balco over at WashingtonPost.com is talking about the criminalization of parenting. He also adds, he's kind of summed up a few different articles, which are not uncommon these days at all, about how parents are getting in trouble for a variety of things that should have just been a family issue. 
They should have just been a family issue and left it that. Uh, one of them, a dad who's been arrested because his son skipped a trip to church. Uh, another one is a mom who was arrested for allowing her daughter to play in the park while she was at work. Um, and as Balco links here, he says, if you haven't yet, be sure to re- read Kim Brooks's essay in Salon about her arrest for leaving her son in the car alone for five minutes while she bought a pair of headphones. This is a long essay. There's no way we can share it on the air, but I will link to uh, this article, which links to that essay, and you can read it. She says, uh, I made a split... De- the, the headline of the article here, the subheadline. I made a split-second decision to run into the store. I had no idea it would consume the next years of my life. Indeed. Now, I know that people get upset about the idea of leaving kids out in the car. It's, uh, you know, I can understand that it could be dangerous. You know, if the keys are in the ignition, for instance, uh, the kid could take the car out for a joyride or attempt to take an emergency brake off. Like, I, I get the I get the concerns. My brother Drew did that very thing. And the, the, the Jeep Grand Cherokee rolled backwards. And I don't know where it went, but I'm sure it was a scary situation. Were you, wait, were you in it? I was so young that mm-hmm. I don't really remember. It may have even been me and not my brother. He might have had nothing to do with it, but I think it was the middle brother and not myself. So, um, you know, if I can, I'll try to learn a little bit more about her story here because it sounds pretty outrageous. But like I said, this is a lengthy essay. So back to Balco. He says that you need an approve of the parents' actions in any of these cases to understand that dumping them into the criminal justice system is a terribly counterproductive way of addressing their mistakes. And I'm not at all convinced that three of the four stories were even mistakes. The mere fact that state officials were essentially micromanaging these parents' decisions is creepy enough. That the consequences for the wrong decision are now criminal is downright scary. It doesn't benefit these kids in the least to give their parents a criminal record smear their parents' names in the neighborhood and communities and make it more difficult for their parents to find a job. And I totally agree. I think that, as we discussed last night on the show in detail, we talked about spanking and sort of verbally abusing a child. Uh, There's a lot of problems in people's homes. I mean, every family has their issues, whatever they might happen to be. Some are less desirable homes uh, than others. You know, that's just the, the way it is. Um... Who gets to decide? Who is it that decides what is a desirable household? What is a healthy, uh, you know, a household that promotes children's maturity and growing up? And, you know, what is it that, is there one answer? Of course not. There are different answers because every family is different. Every child is different. Every set of parents uh, is different. How one size could possibly fit all is a ridiculous claim. And, I don't know if that's what the state agents would claim when pressed, but ultimately that's what a state system is. It's a one-size-fits-all system that doesn't really budge for individual discrepancies, for instances of differences. You know, when a a law is written, it's usually written in response to something. So somebody gets hurt or kidnapped or whatever, and, oh, crap, the law doesn't, uh, didn't address this. We need a new law. So they come up with a new law, and it's, you know, it's very specific. In what it allows. A lot of, allows. A lot of judges, for instance, can't make uh, decisions about sentencing on certain criminal charges because they've been hamstrung by the law and the way it's written, saying they have to sentence a certain minimum. It doesn't matter if the parent didn't hurt the child or if this was an accident or whatever. The law is the law, at least when it applies to us. Of course, when it applies to the government bureaucrats, we find out that it doesn't apply in a lot of cases at all where you thought that it might. So if you've got a story about being a parent and having the law get involved in your life with uh, your family and your children, you're welcome to share your story with us. The toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. I'm grateful. I don't think my, um, thinking back along my childhood, I don't think the police ever showed up in my parents' house, ever. Same here. And I'm grateful for that. Yeah. Um, When the police or the justice the court system gets involved with your family. Uh, that's bad news for everybody. The, the the police and the judges and so forth are mostly useless people who may or may not have any marketable skills. So they need to do really serious things to prove that you know they're, they're in charge. Yeah, and they're important people. 
because they can't prove it any other way. Nobody willingly shows them that that support. Nobody signals that to them by paying them for the for the services they do willingly. They take it and they have to get really serious about this stuff to show that they're how serious they are and how important they are. Unfortunately, all these stories, almost all of them, had something to do with a snitch. They had something to do with a family member or a friend, usually a neighbor, total stranger, somebody snitching on another parent to the police. And of course, when the police get called in, you know, they've got the one tool, which is the hammer, and everything looks like a nail, including your kids and your relationship and your family. The toll free number is 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Is there a story where calling the police actually helped a family situation? Protection, success, incorporate your business. LLC. If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair, pain-free, and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm-hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs, and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time consuming expensive office visits no no and no no for a limited time you can try no no pro risk free you'll also get the facial kit and a travel case get weeks of long lasting results that's it i'm getting a no no great minds do think alike (laughs) (laughs) try no no pro risk free by calling 800-952-5760 800 952 5760 that's 800 952 5760 800 952 5760 An amateur sailor has announced his plans to sail around the world to decrease awareness of important global issues. 29-year-old Michael Gilmer will cover approximately 28,000 nautical miles over three months, all the while drawing attention away from famine afflicting several African nations, revolution in the Middle East, flooding in Thailand, and economic instability across five continents. The goal here is to really make people think about a young, overconfident on an expensive boat, rather than the pressing matters of substance that actually affect people's lives. As Gilmer set off on his journey Thursday, something was happening in Washington. In local news, a cute eight-year-old is beginning to realize how much better she is than ugly girls. Since I'm cute and they're not, that means that they're not as good as me. In other news, a slaughterhouse worker is told to stop naming them all. And sure, an area man can watch your cat while his life is falling apart, no problem. You have just participated in a large-scale psychological research study. Please fill out the attached liability waiver and send it to the onion.com slash newsbeat. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. In every age, a technology is created that upends the foundations of society. The wheel, the printing press, the internet. Now, in a world sliding into financial chaos, a new technology is changing the way monetary systems work around the world. It is called Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a new form of money controlled not by banks, governments, or corporations, but through mutual commerce between free individuals. To learn more, visit WeUseCoins.com. 
Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You are invited to bring up whatever's on your mind. Toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got a mobile site for those of you with a smartphone who want quick access to our live streams and podcasts, you can go to m, like mobile.freetalklive.com. There's also a link to our webcam on the mobile page as well. So it makes it easy to find us online from your smartphone, m.freetalklive.com. Ian and Johnny Ray in the studio here tonight. We were talking about the criminalization of parenting just uh, more disturbing stories in a long line of disturbing stories. Uh, one of the worst ones I remember hearing about was the uh, 14-year-old male who was called, the police were called by his grandmother. Uh, this was in Florida. She had, or he had taken her car for a joyride, as uh, teenagers are wont to do in some cases. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is not an uncommon thing in the, the world of being a teenager, but calling the police certainly is... At least at some point was an uncommon response to such a, you know, to such behavior. Now perhaps it's more common than previously. Anyway, that's what Grandma did in this situation. Little did she know that they were going to arrest her grandson, charge him in the juvenile system, put him into a juvie lockdown, uh, some sort of a juvenile uh, holding cell or center, where he was ultimately uh, killed. Allegedly, um, was it the guards? I think that that did him in there. Anyway, he lost his life inside that uh, that government facility. And that's not the only story like it where people have called. Not even a, it doesn't even have to involve children. It can be it can be adults, you know, in a family situation, maybe at a Thanksgiving dinner or something like that where there's some kind of a dust up between some members of the family that don't agree with one another. There's some kind of a conflict. The police get brought in to help resolve the conflict and somebody usually leaves in handcuffs. And they, in a lot of cases, leave with a very different viewpoint on the police at that point. Yeah, and I would like to add that probably in most cases, I'm not, I'm not certain of this, but I would say in most cases, police responding to any situation, their humanity is what what really drives them, and they you and they do the right thing. Mm-hmm. Um, However, and it's not that uh, that that bad people that that a police officer is always necessarily a bad person, but the police have to in order in order to function they have to be above the law because the the English language is malleable. Uh, somebody has to be number one, and is it the police or is it the the is it some lawyers that are prosecuting the police? It it has to be somebody at the top and they get their way Mm -hmm. and so it's the police and that kind of uh the incentives that that gives them are are not incentives that would that would make them restrain their behavior and not escalate situations unnecessarily and so forth we had a speaking of escalation we had a situation with the police here in Keene uh, about a week back or a week or so back uh probably almost two at this point where a man shot himself in Keene. He had the police uh, that were out to get him. They wanted to get him on a violation of probation. Now, he hadn't been alleged to have hurt anyone. He was alleged to have received stolen property, which in a lot of cases I don't think is a crime. Stealing is a crime, but you know, unknowingly receiving stolen property is not. Now, you do have to knowingly receive the stolen property in order for that crime or in order for that charge to stick. But that doesn't mean someone who doesn't know the law won't take a plea deal on something they didn't know was stolen property. They'll just get charged with a crime, and then because they're so scared of the system, they'll take the plea deal. Anyway, in that situation, the guy was uh, allegedly holding a gun to his own chest, and the police showed up with, you know, of course, the maximum level of force possible. Uh, I guess I, I guess I can't say the maximum level of force because they didn't shoot the guy dead on the spot. They, uh, you know, they did wait around, and he ultimately killed himself. But they did come out with uh, the Bearcat, this ballistic tank thing that they have. They came out with all their body armor. And I just don't know if uh, that level of intimidation is going to be helpful to a suicidal man. I just don't. uh, Having not been suicidal in the past, I can't say I can relate uh, to it. But 
I think some people have been through distressing times in their life, and I've certainly been through some distressing times. I don't know about you, Johnny Ray, but I feel like uh, that in those distressing times, I don't think a, a team of armed men pointing weapons at me and shouting and or however they were addressing the situation would have been helpful. It's tough to say what the exact ideal response would be. I suppose they they knew who he was and they, they knew that he was armed going into it. So, uh, you know, almost any level, uh, I can't argue any level of protection and firepower I'm not going to argue with, but a marketplace generally does a better job than some city officials or something in determining the appropriate level of force and the appropriate response to these situations. Let's go to the phones. You're welcome to share your thoughts with us. William is, or Will rather, in East Tennessee. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Will. Hey, what's up, y'all? How you doing? Hey, Will. Go ahead with your thoughts tonight. Well, you know, all this talk about, you know, wars and all the stuff that you see on TV today and, you know, the bombardments in, in Gaza and all these things that you see, um, for some reason it seems that the American Muslim community has um, Stockholm Syndrome. I guess would be the best way to put it. What is Stockholm syndrome? Um, Can you describe that? Isn't that where you you fall in love with your kidnapper or your oppressor, yes. your slave master? Yeah. Yep. Um, now, how is it that the American Muslim and this sounds like Will from Muslims for Liberty? Am I right about that? That is correct. So, how is it that uh, the American Muslim community has Stockholm syndrome? What do you mean by that? Well, even with the drone bombings that have been going on for six, the last six, almost seven years, even with the ignoring of the plight of uh, the people in Gaza and, and in Palestine, even with the heightening of the theft from the American public in order to subsidize the Israeli military and economy, um, even with the, I think now in 11, 11 cases in Six, almost seven years of entrapment where fake terror plots were and young mm. teenage Muslim kids were entrapped by the, you know, this didn't actually happen during Bush's administration. You know, they were rounding people up, but they weren't entrapping teenage kids with fake terror plots. Mm -hmm. um, even with all of this, you still have these things coming out saying, you know, 70 percent of the Muslim community still supports Obama unquestioningly. And then on top of that, you have. Do you believe that? Uh, what they uh, call do you believe those numbers? I mean, do, is that your experience as a Muslim? Um, well, not in the circles that I run in, not so much. But in the circles that I have exposure to, and the people that I know, absolutely. Really? Anyone who questions him is a racist. Yeah, absolutely. You <laughs> either love Obama or you're a Republican and want the Republicans to kill the Muslims. Yeah, somehow they kind of ignore the fact that Obama's kind of doing the same thing. Well, I'm going to have to let you go, man. we got a really bad connection, uh, but I appreciate the call tonight. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I wasn't aware of, of a, a, an especial favor, fa favoriteness, uh, favoredness for, of the Muslims for Obama specifically or the Democrats, but I think that um, anybody, any community who maybe comes from another country – to the U.S., it's the U.S. has got this functional richness about it because of the 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 way the the monetary system is now, and how and the concept of the petrodollars, and how the the uh, the U.S. dollar is the uh, what do you call it the the currency that's used all over the world. The it, reserve? Um, no, no, that's not the word I'm looking for. It'll come to me later. But okay. it it makes it makes us and what we've been able to do printing printing our own wealth. Um, you just don't want to question. You don't want to kill the golden goose. But it's it's just an accident of history, I think, that we've had this status for a little while. And it's uh, things like Bitcoin are going to kill it. And 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 Ian, I say to you, be prepared, brother, for the Bitcoin for the death of the old for system, the dollar collapse, the old ways. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm ready, baby. Bring it on. Let's go. I've still got some dollars, obviously, because they're still useful to some extent today. Um, but, you know, I think it's an important idea to diversify what you have. So have some uh, Bitcoin, 
have some silver, perhaps, maybe some gold. I still think that uh, precious metals are a good way to store value against the dollar because you never know what's going to happen with Bitcoin. And all you know, you also don't know what's going to happen with gold or silver. But historically, gold and silver have done a good job of kind of keeping up with the inflation of the dollar. Now, Bitcoin could far outpass them and surpass them, and it has, I think, over the last couple of years, no doubt. Uh, Bitcoin's been an amazing meteor, or almost meteoric rise. Uh, but of course, it's uncharted territory. While gold and silver are fairly well charted at this point. Uh, now, we were talking about uh, Muslim Americans and their love for for Obama. Do you do you know anything about that? No, but I'll take uh, Will's word for it. I mean, he's connected to the community, so I, I believe what he has to say. Maybe we can get him on another night with a better connection or bring him on Skype or something like that. Our toll-free number here for you to bring up anything you want is 855-450-FREE. Johnny Ray is going to tell us about voting coming up next. Geico Motorcycle presents Reflections from the Road. Every time I rev my engine down an open stretch of road, I'm glad I switched to Geico Motorcycle Insurance. Because nothing feels better than saving money with Geico. Except maybe the time I saved a life. A squirrel's life. Gave that little feller mouth to mouth and then he bit me. On second thought, saving money with Geico probably feels better. Geico Motorcycle Insurance. See how much you could save. Hi, Chuck Woolery here. I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn, isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee. You can use the whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt you'll send it back. This stuff really works. Australian Dream is now available at Target or your favorite retail store. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, July 15th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,314. Silver opened at $2,104 and Bitcoin is trading at $622.78. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound. CD and DVD duplication for all your print and audio duplication needs. Mention promo code LIBERTY and get 5% off all DVD and CD duplication jobs. Online at affordablesound.com or call them up at 512-459-5253. In the news, according to a report by AFP, clashes erupted in Paris Sunday as thousands protested against Israel and in support of residents in the Gaza Strip. A six-day conflict in the region has left 168 Palestinians dead. Riot police responded with tear gas and made six arrests after two groups attempted to storm synagogues over the weekend. Meanwhile, in the northern city of Lille, between 2,300 and 6,000 people protested peacefully, according to police and organizers. According to a report by the Wall Street Journal, France wants to know who is using Bitcoin so they can track and tax them. Effective last Friday, the country updated its tax rules to make profits from Bitcoin sales subject to capital gains taxes and will also classify the digital currency as an asset that adds to owners' wealth, subjecting them to France's fortune tax. Proponents say the new regulations will add legitimacy to the cryptocurrency, but others disagree. Arguing the hope for Bitcoin was to build a currency that could be used anonymously and remain free from government intervention. 
A town in West Texas is enforcing a policy in which property owners first receive a written warning and then a Class C misdemeanor for letting their grass grow taller than government-mandated standards. That report from Police State USA. In Abilene, property owners who fail to comply with the ordinance could be slapped with a public nuisance violation and fined hundreds of dollars and then billed to have contractors mow their grass for them. The town has declared July 22nd through the 26th to be Zero Tolerance Week, with some penalties reaching up to $500. Opponents of the Draconian Initiative encourage private property owners to reject the violations in support of voluntary cooperative solutions to make communities look more appealing. Support for Liberty Beat comes from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock central at CoreyMooreShow.com. And support comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online at rrbi.co or by phone at 800-874-9760. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, July 15th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Federal health officials on Friday announced they're temporarily closing the flu and anthrax laboratories at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta, halting all shipments of infectious agents from the agency's highest security labs, as reported by the New York Times. The move comes after two serious back-to-back -back incidents occurred, one involving 62 CDC employees being exposed to live anthrax bacteria after it was sent to labs and equipped to handle it. The second incident involved a lab contaminating a benign flu sample with a dangerous H5N1 bird flu strain responsible for killing nearly 400 people in the U.S. since 2003. A group of former government officials, pilots, and environmental and health experts will present evidence of the dangers of geoengineering to the Shasta County Board of Supervisors in California. They say it's the mandated responsibility of the EPA and air quality control boards to alert the public to the dangers of solar radiation management a form of geoengineering, often referred to as chemtrails. Their goal is to force the release of documents related to health problems connected to stratospheric aerosol geoengineering programs. The downloading website The Pirate Bay is requesting support for two of its founders who are currently in prison. Peter Sunday is serving time in a high-security prison in Sweden for his work with The Pirate Bay. Gottfried Sparsholm has been previously accused of hacking, aggravated fraud, and attempted aggravated fraud, and sentenced to two years in prison. He's currently awaiting sentencing for hacking crimes in Denmark. The Pirate Bay asked supporters to send them encouraging mail, books, and vegan candy. Support for Liberty Beat comes from the notorious activist Michael Cargill. He has a new show called Come and Talk It, live Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock on 1370 AM in Austin. That's 1370 AM, Sunday afternoons at 4. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high fructose corn syrup in anything. Online at CaboBob's.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, July 15, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Federal authorities are currently on high alert in Washington, D.C., following reports that hundreds of crazed sociopaths infiltrated the congressional chambers this morning. Mary Canley, a Capitol employee who managed to escape the House chambers, described the troubling scene to reporters. I saw all of them, about four to 500 completely deranged people, just rambling on about guns, the, the military, and money. Investigators say the lunatics, many of whom are believed to suffer from severe personality disorders, have locked themselves in the chambers for hours now with no clear purpose or reasoning. I looked at one of them right in the eyes and it was like he was empty on the inside, devoid of any emotion or feeling. It was horrifying. It's only a matter of time before they do something that really hurts someone. We believe these men to be manipulative and extremely dangerous. Luckily, they are also very disorganized, and there is a chance they may never be able to ever take any action at all. For more on this developing story, keep checking TheOnion.com. This is The Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the second hour of the program. Plenty of time for you to call in toll-free at 855-450-FREE and bring up whatever's on your mind. 855-450-3733 with you tonight in here. And Johnny Ray. Join us online over at freetalklive.com. Get interactive. Create the content right there on the front page of the website. We're actually going to go back to Will from Muslims for Liberty. He was on the phone with us earlier and the phone line just went so bad I couldn't 
Just couldn't put it on the air for much longer. So I asked him to call on Skype. And, of course, if you've got Skype and an, a semi-decent internet connection with an okay microphone, you're going to sound better than you do on your cell phone or your home phone. Will, you're sounding good, and you're back with us uh, from Tennessee. And you were telling us about um, American Muslims, in your experience as a Muslim, who uh, seem to be siding in large numbers with the Obama administration despite all of the aggression in the Middle East and around the world by the U.S. military. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they in, in 2012, it was a huge landslide, according to uh, the major Muslim organizations, as far as like the numbers, the 85 percent, that's a huge amount of a minority community to vote for a single candidate. Mm. And I mean, and this is after all of these things, like there had already been plenty of these entrapments, plenty of bombings. There'd been uh, two bombardments of Gaza. There'd been, um, you know, heightening of uh, offensive actions in Afghanistan so, I mean, all of these things were already known. Everybody already knew that this is what you should expect from Obama if he's in office. And they still voted for him. And now— So, wait, just to clarify, you're saying 85 percent of American Muslims voted for Obama the second time around? Yeah. And the According, first time? What was it the first time? Do you know offhand? No, I don't know offhand. I don't think there was really a major effort by the Muslim organizations to try to do any polling after the first election. Mm -hmm. After the second election, the big national Muslim groups like CARE and IMPAC and stuff, they all did polling to find out, and their numbers came out with 85% of the you know, American Muslim community that can vote voted, because you have a lot of immigrants here, too, that you know, don't have the right to vote yet. Um, they, they voted you know, in, in, in astronomical numbers for the Obama administration, even with the knowledge of all these things. Mm. And now you have— uh, just last week, uh, um, the whistleblower thing dropping that five prominent Muslims in the U.S. were listed as a part of this whole NSA dragnet that was put out. So you've got the leader of a big national Muslim organization. You've got a Muslim Republican politician who works for like political campaigns for the Republican Party. Now, what is this NSA dragnet you're talking about? I might have missed that news. Uh, well, the, uh, the leaks, the Snowden leaks. Over the Prism uh, fiasco. Okay. When Greenwald did his new release, he released five names that were on the list of Americans who were being targeted. Ah. And all five of those names were well known, influential, wealthy Muslims. So, so the I evidence is that the NSA has been targeting well known Muslims. And since 2009. Yeah, and that there's after been— After Obama you know, got elected. They started doing it after Obama got elected. 2009 is when it began. So, and But now these groups are still going to, to the Iftar, the White House Iftar last night, like MPAC and all these— you know, big big name Muslim groups that got invited. Now the one now the group that was targeted, one of the groups that was targeted, didn't actually get invited to go, so they didn't go. But all the other groups, they decided, hey, let's uh, uh, let's go and have dinner. And with the Israeli ambassador, Obama spent this iftar time um, addressing instead of the Muslim community and saying, you know, hey, kind of sorry about that whole spying thing that y'all found out about. And, you know, entrapping teenage kids, eh, it's not really cool, my bad. Yeah, he'll no. never apologize for that stuff. He invited the Israeli ambassador to the iftar and then spent the entire dinner talking to him and ignoring What is the iftar? I'm not really familiar with that. What is that? Uh, Muslims fast during Ramadan. It's mm -hmm. Ramadan right now, and uh, Muslims fast from sunup to sundown, and at sundown, everybody gets together and has a big meal to break their fast. So it's oh, called okay. iftar. So every year um, since 1996, there's been an iftar at the White House. The first one was hmm. actually under Thomas Jefferson. He invited um, one of the emissaries from Morocco, and they had an iftar dinner like 200 years ago. So is there an iftar the every night of uh, Ramadan? Yes, oh, every okay. night. Yeah. Gotcha. Now, now, local mosques usually will have them. So if you're hungry for some Middle Eastern or some Indian food, show up right around sundown and uh, – <laughs> Just say, hey, I uh, thought I'd come and celebrate with y'all. And they'll literally like roll, 
pull out the red carpet for you for you and like oh please come in you know, get up get up move move let the man sit down here let me make a plate for you and bring it to you you know like they go muslims are like on their best behavior during ramadan it's it's actually pretty nice <laughs> Ian, I have a, a blurb here from antiwar.com that is related to Will's comments. Okay. By Dan Sanchez, just a paragraph or two. Numerous headlines in mainstream American coverage of Israel's assault on the Gaza Strip feature language about Israelis and Palestinians, quote, exchanging rocket fire, which conveys, the, which conveys to the American public the sense that it is a matter of a battle between two neighboring powers— instead of the bombardment of an occupied territory, as if there was any kind of equivalence between the 400 tons of explosives that have rained down from Israeli jet planes and the primitive unguided rockets being lobbed from Gaza. The former has, in just a few days, already killed over 100 Palestinians, mostly mm. civilians, and including at least 13 children. The latter has resulted in zero Israeli deaths and only seven injuries. It's rather like a scrum of cops assaulting a prostrate man with batons and tasers <laughs> and the media calling that a fight instead of a beating because mm. the man, as he flailed about under the blows raining down on him, kicked the leg of one of the cops. Will, any wow. thoughts? Yeah. Well, actually, one of my thoughts is that the, uh, the, injured, Palis the injured Israelis are actually Palestinian Bedouin refugees that live within the wall. That's yeah. uh, ironic, isn't it? Yeah, they're not actually even they're not actually Jewish or Israeli. They're Arab Bedouins that have a section that they're kind of quarantined into by the Israeli government on mm. the other side of the wall. So the the injuries weren't even actually Israelis. They were Arab Bedouins. It would be, it would be pretty easy for the Mossad to sneak into the Gaza Strip and fire off some primitive ordinance in some kind yeah. of false flag thing, I imagine. Well, I mean— You never it, know if something like that the is, is happening. Rockets, the Qassam rockets that you hear about raining down, and, you know, first of all, I'm the first one to condemn the use of, of violence against civilian populations. Important but the to Kassam, say. The Kassam, yeah, I know, it's it, it, because you have to quantify that in the modern day. Um, the Qassam rockets that are being fired over the wall by the by Hamas is basically like shooting a trash can over the wall with an M80. I mean, honestly, that's the equivalent of it. They leave rubble. They don't knock down buildings. They don't have any kind of an incendiary charge. Hmm. They don't explode. They're literally hot, hollow metal. They're fancy bottle rockets that are made out of metal. That's it. Will, anything That's else you want to share with the audience tonight? I appreciate the perspective. Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, be sure to take the opportunity to check us out at muslimsforliberty.org. Uh, we'll be speaking at the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest again. Had a great time hanging out with you guys at Pork Fest this year. Yeah, it was year nice to see you. Thanks, thanks for the, uh, thanks for the food as you kicked off Ramadan, and thanks for the call tonight. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And that was uh, Will from Muslims for Liberty. I believe that's Muslims, the number four, liberty.org. Great organization. We continue here with your calls and thoughts. Tom's in Hudson, New Hampshire. You're on Free Talk Live. Tom. I must say I feel sorry for any uh, Muslims that live north of the Arctic Circle because they can't eat anything until sundown. But anyway... Uh, the Ron Paul Revolution was very active in uh, trying to promote Ron Paul's ideas of liberty, and mm -hmm. they were defeated partly uh, by ballots, but partly by uh, trickery and rigging of the nomination process. I don't and know where I'm you're going like with this, but hang on, Tom. We'll talk about it with you in a moment. Plus, Johnny Ray, uh, related, you've got voting to talk about here, an article... Oh, yeah. On uh, voting versus not voting, your comments certainly welcome on whatever's on your mind here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And there's also some spying news if we get to it. It's Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. 
Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realist, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's This is Free Talk Live. We invite you to bring up anything that you want. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online at freetalklive.com. You can get free coffee through our website. You just go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Get a free pound of some of the best coffee out there from BuzzBox. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. This is great coffee. And BuzzBox is competitively priced with other high-end coffees, but they also do something that's unique to BuzzBox, and that is that they have set up a program that allows people around the world to buy into their coffee co-op. Plus, for every 10 Free Talk Live listeners that sign up at coffee.freetalklive.com, that can help us and BuzzBox finance a microloan through World Vision. And we'd like to finance as many of those as possible. So please go to coffee.freetalklive.com. You can actually get great coffee, a pound of it for free. Just pay the shipping cost. 
And then you get on an auto ship program. You can cancel your subscription at any time. You can customize your subscription to deliver the coffee that you want as often as you want it delivered. And also help people in poverty make a better life for themselves. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com as we go back to Tom in New Hampshire. You were talking briefly about the Ron Paul campaigns, and you'd barely had a chance to get your thoughts out. So go ahead, Tom. Actually, uh, Hillary Rodham Clinton once told Ron Paul during a uh, committee meeting, the hearing, that uh, Ron Paul has the most enthusiastic supporters of anybody she ever saw. And they did not take kindly to all the uh, parliamentary maneuvering and cheating done by the Republican Party big shots to deprive Ron Paul of the nomination or even of the opportunity to have his name placed in nomination at the Republican convention. I just wanted to call attention to the, the attention of these Ron Paul revolutionaries that might be listening to your program, that uh, the mainstream establishment Republicans are going to be holding a big fundraiser at the Fisher Cats baseball game in Manchester on July 31st, and all the big Republican mainstream big shots like U.S. Senator Kelly Ayotte and former U.S. Senator Sununu and uh, the Chris Christie, the chairman of the Republican Governors Association, are going to be there, and they, they sent me a solicitation that, like, I'm supposed to pay big money for the fundraiser, uh, and uh, I kind of don't think so, but anybody who wants to do any kind of protesting uh, they would probably uh, find uh, a good, fun time protesting outside the baseball park in Manchester, New Hampshire, on the evening of July 31st, or even buy tickets and go on in. Tom, do you have a history of giving money to the Republican Party? Uh, no, I do not. But one time, uh, George W. Bush is uh, uh, the Republican Party, National Party sent me a fundraising junk mail. And uh, there was a presidential photo on it that said, uh, Tom, uh, thank you for your support of the Republican Party. Uh, grassroots leaders like you are the key to building a safer, stronger, more secure country for ourselves and all Americans. And I scanned that and put it on my campaign website uh, because uh, the president was praising me as being a grassroots leader. Uh, and uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I, I had a good fun time. It, it was campaign junk mail, you know the usual uh, BS in the, the campaign junk mail. Well, hey, that there's the president's uh, fake signature printed on it, and everything as the president of there the United go. States praising me for a special being moment a good for you, Tom. Leader. Thanks for the call tonight. Yeah. Toll free numbers eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five. Four five zero three seven three three. I don't know about protesting politicians. I don't really think that does anything at all. Uh, but I do enjoy trolling them, and I do enjoy uh, ambushing them as well. Those, I think, are fun things to do when politicians come to town. You go to, uh, here in New Hampshire, most of the venues are fairly small where these politicians will come to. Of course, you know, the, every four years, almost all of the mainstream politicians come to New Hampshire, it being the first state that votes in a primary uh, so they come here and they, you know, pound the flesh with people and shake babies. I mean, kiss babies. And so it's a great opportunity to confront them with video cameras and ask them pointed questions, which, of course, they do their best to ignore. But we had a real blast with that in 2012 up here in New Hampshire. And I think it's going to be even better coming in 2016 or 2015 when the, the primary stuff really begins in earnest. And uh, we can have a lot of fun with that stuff, I think. I think protesting probably does a little something. I'm so I'm such a slacker. I you know I just talk about this stuff. But uh, you know if a uh, Mitt Romney rolls in, or, or say Barack Obama rolls in, and one year there's 20 protesters, and the next year there's 250, he might take something away from that. Maybe if he can see them where they are in the free speech zone. Yeah, maybe. Well, I know that when uh, Joe Biden came to town a couple of years ago, I did go out. I did go out with my feds out of NH sign or US. I think no, feds out of NH, and uh, and I know Dave, Dave Ridley was out there with some sort of sign as uh -huh. well, uh, reporting. But there really wasn't a whole lot out there. And but his his limo drove right by me, so mm -hmm. it wasn't like I couldn't be seen. We don't. We didn't have the issue with the with the free speech zones here. That wasn't a problem. In fact, I was actually surprised how close I was actually allowed to get. Um, I'm pretty sure the dog that they had, the bomb sniffing dog, did not sniff 
uh, in my direction. Of course, I didn't have any bombs, so maybe if you know, if I had been a violent individual, which I'm not, perhaps my my luck would not have been as good. But I don't think the dog got anywhere near me. And there was an agent who came to talk to me prior to the arrival of Joe Biden, but he didn't pat me down or anything like that. Uh huh. I mean, what so, did he ask you? Yeah, he was just asking me what I was doing, that kind of thing. Okay. And uh, making making chit chat. And I just kind of thought to myself as the limo went by, gosh, if I did have a mind to hurt somebody, it wouldn't be that hard, was kind of what I thought. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can talk about your experience with protesting politicians. I, I mean, as far as the scale of protests are concerned, I think that's one of the, the least important things you could do because the politician is not going to change their mind. They're not going to see you standing there with whatever message it is that you have and think, oh, that's poignant. I never thought of it that way before. Uh-huh. And then, you know, change their perspective. I just don't think that that's very likely. Toll free number is 855 450 free. Let's continue here. We got voting to talk about since we're talking about politicians. As good a time as any, Johnny Ray, to jump into this. Sure. It's by Dan Sanchez. This is the same guy who had those comments at antiwar.com that I shared. Uh, I got this from lourockwell.com. Dan Sanchez has his own website, dansanchez.me. All right. What reform is? The state, as an essentially parasitic enemy of voluntary society, institutionally incentivizes parasitic behavior in its members. When it limits its parasitism, the motivations underlying that restraint are almost entirely pragmatic raisons d'etat and not a principled recognition of individual rights. The (laughs) state will generally predate as much as as public opinion will let it get away with. When it restricts its predations, it generally does so to avoid running into mass resistance and to preserve its public perception of legitimacy. Absolutely true. Talk of liberty and principle by those within the state who seek to shrink the state— are also generally mere attempts to shore up state legitimacy and not expressions of true solidarity with victims of the state. I tend to agree. The cynical viewpoint is uh, is one with which I uh, I can agree, but I don't think it really applies here in New Hampshire entirely. We can talk about that here in a moment. I don't know where, was it Dan? Was Dan it? Sanchez, yeah. I don't know where Dan lives, but I suspect it's not in New Hampshire. More coming up here, 855-450 free. This is Free Talk Live. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terragonics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terragonics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free, 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terragonics. Life's getting better. Phone records, financial and location data, Prism, Tempora, X-Keyscore, Boundless Informant, Hey, y'all, Scott Horton here for offnow.org. Now, here's the deal. Due to the Snowden revelations, we have a great opportunity for a short period of time to get some real rollback of the national surveillance state. Now, they're already trying to tire us by introducing fake reforms in the Congress. And the courts, they betray their sworn oaths to the Constitution and Bill of Rights again and again and can in no way be trusted to stop the abuses for us. We've got to do it ourselves. How? We nullify it at the state level. It's still not easy, but the Off Now project of the 10th Amendment Center has gotten off to a great start. I mean it. There's real reason to be optimistic here. They've gotten their model legislation introduced all over the place, in state after state. I've lost count. More than a dozen. You're always wondering, yeah, but what can we do? Here's something. Something important. Something that can work if we do the work. Get started cutting off the NSA support in your state. Go to offnow.org. Did you know coffee is the second most absorbent crop on Earth? Most coffee at grocery stores or in chains contains banned pesticides and has a high mold content. Seriously, we're proud to partner with Comano Island Coffee Roasters to provide the best of the best coffee, BuzzBox Coffee. 
Try a free pound today. You cover shipping. 10% of future purchases benefit our efforts to give the gift of human freedom throughout the world. At least 100 World Vision microfinance loans. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at Forum.LRN.FM. That's Forum.LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can bring up anything that you'd like, toll-free at 855-450-FREE. We have an article that Johnny Ray is sharing with us from one of the directors or the heads of the Mises Institute, Dan, what was his last name, Sanchez? Yes. Uh, we'll continue Dan's opinions about reforming the system from the inside here in moments. You also need to check out Modafinil if you've been needing focus and are feeling fatigued. You're trying to get that extra edge when it counts. Modafinil from modup.net. Look into it. Studies show that one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple uh, benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about Modafinil from modup.net and how it's making the difference in their work, giving them the critical edge that they need. Now, over at Modafinil or at uh, modup.net, you can get Modafinil. It's affordable for everyone to take advantage of uh, the benefits, the 80 to 85% lower price than the brand name drug. But don't mistake low prices for an inferior quality. They ensure that purity and potency is consistent to that of the branded version. So remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. And don't forget that modup.net supports the Bitcoin community. You can order your modafinil from modup.net with Bitcoin and get a 33% discount. Plus, if you use code FTL, you'll get an extra 10 free tablets with your order. So don't forget code FTL at modup.net for world-class service at a great price. Modup, M-O-D-U-P, dot net with code FTL. As we continue here, uh, the story that you've just kind of scratched the surface on, Johnny Ray, is talking about some of the frustrations of uh, politicians. You know, so Even the ones that claim to be for freedom, not so much in a lot of cases. Right. Generally mere attempts to shore up state legitimacy. There is no need for principled libertarians to join the ranks of the state or to try to direct it through voting in mm. order to cause the state to reverse march. So long as there is ideological change shifting, so long as there is ideological change shifting the frontier of potential resistance and the requirements for public legitimacy toward more libertarian demands, Prudentially parasitic individuals within the state, many of them posing as libertarians, unfortunately, will assuredly come forth to call for limiting the state in order to preserve it. There's no need for actual libertarians to fill that role. Liberalizing reform is not a matter of public advocates within the state standing up for liberty, 
Rather, liberalizing reform is a state ploy for self-preservation. It is a parasite pragmatically withdrawing an appendage to avoid counterproductively mm -hmm. provoking its host. I get what he's saying there. He's saying that any efforts at reforming the state, making it more humane, uh, are just uh, essentially extending the life of the state. That's what he's getting at. He's not. Uh, I think he's saying that um, that libertarians who want to do that are wasting their time, and it's going to happen whether they do that or not. And the real change is people filming themselves going through a what a, um, a, an immigration checkpoint. The Has border. he said that? Now that's what you're saying, Johnny Ray. Yes, and, and that's fine. We can talk about your your perspective on this. And I think that certainly holding government agents accountable for their actions is important. But on the other hand, um, if you look at the recent court decisions, and there's actually breaking news in New Hampshire that I haven't mentioned yet tonight because I was actually waiting to get an article up over at freekeen.com, which I have yet to have time to do. But there's been yet another case where a liberty activist in New Hampshire has been awarded a significant payout over $30,000. The last one was 50 something thousand, $57,000 for Carla Garrick, the president of the Free State Project. The latest is Bill Alleman, a.k.a. Biker Bill. Uh, he has been awarded over $30,000 in another case out of Ware, New Hampshire, uh, in which police arrested him for recording video of their activities. So because Carly Garrick and somebody else got $90,000, the state's a good thing. No, I'm not saying the state's a good thing. I'm just telling you that um, recording the police is a fine idea, but eventually there's a chance police are going to put you in a jail cell because of that. And there's nothing wrong with working within the system to try to get some sort of justice out of that. I mean, the, that's fifty thousand dollars and thirty. That's eighty thousand plus, and almost ninety thousand dollars that can be spent to further the ideas of liberty. Now, yeah, that's a that's a big difference from voting, though. When the state takes the fight to mm -hmm. you, you can fight back in whatever manner you want, I guess. But I don't think that means I should um, take a Friday afternoon when I could be doing something productive and going and standing in line and, and voting. But well, first of all, voting is usually Tuesdays, not Fridays. But uh, where'd you learn that? <laughs> I vote. Dr. State. <laughs> but my point is not that. Uh, my, my point is to say that the the attitude I'm hearing from this guy, and we're only a, a little bit through his, his piece here. We're, we're, we're a little over halfway okay, through. It's short. Fairly, fairly short. Uh, but the attitude I'm hearing is, well, oh, well, anything you do will essentially puff up the state. That any attempts to reform, any attempts to solve issues within the no, state. No, he's not saying that. He's not. No, he's not. He's saying that he's... Uh, he says go, it'll help, go ahead and finish, and finish he says it'll help uh, preserve their legitimacy. He says that all the people who go in and run for political office with a message of we need to reform and change things and lessen the government essentially helps uh, sustain the state. He's saying, he's saying when that happens, it happens for the reason, for the purpose of preserving the state. He's saying that's their intention? Yes. I don't know if I believe that's true in all of their cases. Like, for instance— uh, we actually have Free State Project participants here who've been elected as uh, state representatives. Of course, for those of you who are new to the show, the Free State Project is the idea of moving liberty-oriented people. Johnny Ray, you are one. I am another to New Hampshire. Not all of them are politically active, however, uh, but some are. And, you know, somebody like a Mark Warden, who is a sponsor on this radio show, he is uh, a, a two-time state representative. He's actually thrown in the towel this year, so he's calling it quits on his political career at, at this point. But for two uh, years in a row, uh, he was the number one most liberty-oriented state rep out there. I mean, I I don't know Mark Warden as an intimate friend, but I think I know him well enough to to know that his goal is not to keep the state around. Uh -huh. I, I mean, when he got elected and when he ran for political office, his goal was not to bring legitimacy to the state. I don't think that that's true of, uh, at least in New Hampshire, a lot of the characters who run for political office with a liberty-oriented mindset. But I can understand the cynicism that would bring about a viewpoint like that. Mark Warden is a principled libertarian. Yes. And that's all I got to say about that. But well, And maybe in a lot of places there aren't principled libertarians running for office. I know that to be the case. I mean, I remember living in Florida where I spent 26 years of my life and did many years worth of volunteering and activism for the Libertarian Party there. And I was frequently frustrated about how unlibertarian some of the libertarian so-called candidates were. So I can understand where he's coming from. Maybe that's what he experiences in Auburn, Alabama at the Mises Institute. 
the only thing Mark Ward needs to do to advance the cause of liberty is walk into a room, any room, and smile at the people inside because he's got a great smile. He's handsome. Yeah. And, and, and he can do anything based on that alone. He, one of the things he chooses to do is run for office and so forth. And, you know, beautiful people do have an advantage there, mm -hmm. but, uh, but, but I think he could, it's perfectly reasonable to believe that he could be doing something else that, uh, that could be more effective. Well, certainly that's a, that's a possibility. And I don't know what that would be. Everybody has their own set of skills and interests and, and who knows, maybe you're right. Maybe what he does next will blow us all out of the water. All I know is that, you know, he got kind of tired of the the state house thing. It takes a lot of time, and he runs his own business. So, you know, he's doing Mark Warden's uh, porcupine real estate thing, and that's taken up a lot of time. It's becoming more and more popular. He's getting more business. So, I'd imagine that's what he's going to be focusing on next is running his business. Um, shall I continue? Yeah, please. I want to hear more of this guy. Liberalizing reform is not a matter of public advocates within the state standing up for liberty. Rather, liberalizing reform is a state ploy for self-preservation. It is a parasite pragmatically withdrawing an appendage to avoid counterproductively provoking its host. Libertarians need only induce such reform by making the host more irritable. Through ideological change and the resulting advance of the red line of potential resistance. I want you to read that line to me when we come back. We'll start there and continue the discussion because that's I want to hear ideas from this guy. I don't want to just hear S-talk against people doing politics. 855 450 free. What's the solution to change? It's Free Talk Live. One little joint supplement. You know this powerful little pill is great for your joints. It even has powerful benefits to help increase your mobility and flexibility. But the joint supplements of today are sadly incomplete because they don't give you the joint relief you're looking for. Until now, introducing the complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. It's the number one selling joint supplement at GNC. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-608-9424. Instaflex provides powerful, effective joint relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. Prove it to yourself by calling now for your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and CVS. But you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-608-9424. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample. 1-800-608-9424. Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, Hootia and Metabolic Complex, and Pro Metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the Anti-Parasite Intestinal Freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus Stevia Liquid Sweetener and the Super Enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. 
Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want by dialing in toll-free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. We're talking about reforming the system from the inside or outside. What are the different approaches or at least what is the uh, the critique of one guy who's an article, uh, an author over at lewrockwell.com. He's involved with the Mises Institute. Uh, Dan, what was his last name again? Sanchez. Sanchez. I keep thinking Dan Savage because Dan Savage is uh, an author of a sex column in The Onion. But no, this is not Dan Savage. Dan Sanchez. Uh, we'll continue with Dan's piece here. And your thoughts are certainly welcome on what's the best way from here to where most of us who love freedom want to be which is a, a society in which humans interact on a consensual basis that you know we get rid of this monopoly on violence known as the state this old decrepit old idea of the state it's time that we move on past it so i'm all in favor of whatever works if what you're proposing is a good idea and it won't hurt anybody then i say go for it if you think it's going to make an impact great if it doesn't end up making an impact and you change how you approach that's cool too so this guy's obviously pretty frustrated with the political system. He's saying that anybody on the inside of, the, of politics who's talking about more freedom is actually just lying. They are essentially a tentacle of the state. That uh, it's it's a ploy. It's all just a ploy. It's a plot to make For, you believe yeah, a, 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 a strategy to retrench and and hold on to what they've got right. rather than a principled position that I think su- it's would suggest paranoid. a change. I think it's a paranoid viewpoint that I understand may be based on reality in Alabama, but I don't see that as being the case here in New Hampshire where the uh, state representatives get paid $100 per year. That doesn't attract the same kind of political animal that a lot of other state representative seats will, like, you know, where they're paying thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year or something like that. Uh-huh. And, and there's a lot more power in New Hampshire. There's 400 state reps. So each state rep is not as powerful as, say, in a state where there may be 100 of them, for instance. So let's continue, though. There was one sentence I wanted you to repeat in the article so I could really kind of get a grasp on what he was saying. Now I'm going to give you a fragment of the one before also. Okay, go ahead. Liberalizing reform is a state ploy for self-preservation. Libertarians need only induce, induce such reform by making the host more irritable through ideological change and the resulting advance of the red line of potential resistance. Prudent statists will then almost surely arise to counter the imprudent statists and counsel partial retreat. If they do not, the state will lose legitimacy and collapse all the sooner. Uh, this concept Is he, he advocating for civil disobedience there? Yes. Okay. He's, 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 he's arguing that... He's arguing for ideological change. He's arguing for education, and but that some people think it. that that doesn't cut it. I mean, you no, can educate people. No, the, the photography is not a crime. He's he's performing education. Yeah, you and that doesn't edu- cut it. That cuts it. No, Carlos you Miller. can edu- Education is certainly a first step, but it's not going to be what results in freedom. I mean, you can have you educated need- people as long as they're cowering like you know wimps. 
then they'll never be free. You've got to put you've got to put something on the line. You've got to stand up for what you believe in. There's not there's not a line separating people between separating people who vote and those who are cowering like wimps. You you don't have to vote. I didn't suggest vote. that. Okay. I wasn't suggesting that at all. I wasn't even talking about voting. Oh, I see. I'm saying that education doesn't solve the problem. You can have a bunch of educated people paying taxes and obeying the state, all the while grumbling to one another about how awful it is. Right. That's what we have today. All kinds of libertarians are educated. They've been reading books forever. Well, I think and you can also be educated and be cowering and still going out to the voting box. Because absolutely. Because voting doesn't... Voting doesn't it doesn't really cost you anything, and you're not gonna you're gonna get what you put into it. Well, voting is I, I agree that it's not a costly activity at all. It it only costs you a few minutes to go and and cast a ballot. At least here in New Hampshire, it's not a big deal. Anytime I've ever gone, it hasn't taken very long to go and do. So it doesn't cost a whole lot, and it's no big deal if you don't do it because your vote doesn't really matter. Ultimately, in most votes, most elections, your vote won't really matter. But here in New Hampshire, there have been some times where small numbers of votes, even one vote, has made the difference uh, between somebody getting elected who's pro-liberty or between a you know a, a, an extra tax passing on onto a ballot or something like that. So I've, I've seen, come up with I've come up with a Robinson Crusoe scenario that totally destroys you and Mark's one vote argument. I want to hear about this in a moment. We'll, we'll, I want to get to the Robinson Crusoe. But I wasn't attacking people for voting or not voting. I tend to agree with you that it's relatively insignificant whether or not someone votes. Um, certainly, education is important. Let's keep doing that. I mean, it's what we're doing here on Free Talk Live. We're bringing the ideas of liberty to average people all across the globe, and that's helping educate folks. But once you're educated, you have to take a step. You have to do something besides read a book. Books are great, no doubt. YouTube videos, that's cool. Listening to audio, podcasts, radio shows, great. Please continue to feed on the ideas of liberty, no doubt about it. Become better communicators of the ideas of liberty. Become not just receivers of those ideas, but communicators. Put the idea out there in whatever way you think is best. Maybe you could blog. If you don't you know, want to do your own radio show, you want to start your own blog, or go out there, hold a video camera, post those videos online on a YouTube channel, hold the government agents accountable. Uh, do civil disobedience. Get out there. Stop paying uh, federal income tax. These are all things that people can do to uh, make a better life for themselves, number one, by keeping more money that they earn and spending it in the way they think is best or saving it or giving it away. And then, uh, you know, making a difference in, uh, in, the, in the state as well by depriving them of some revenue, by depriving them of your obedience. But the average person isn't willing to take a risk for freedom. They're not willing to risk much of anything. Because it's scary to risk things. And I think that until you have people willing to take risk of, of some level of significance, then I don't think we're really going to get much of anywhere. Because the people in the state will expect your obedience, and as long as they get it, they don't care what you think about them. They don't care what you say about them. They don't care about the meetings you're having. When you talk about how bad things are, ultimately, as long as you do what they say, as long as you pay the amounts they demand, they're sitting pretty. I think that that's true for a lot of them. I think a lot of them as well, police and other state functionaries, do care about the prevailing political opinion. Mm -hmm. And if they realized that most of their community looked on them as a villain, which their incentives kind of turned them into— They would change they their would behavior. Cha they would get a real job, and they would start contributing. If, if everybody reviled them— they would change. Now, there are some, and these people make up the the backbone of the police who are just sadistic, and they join because this is this the, being a police officer is a job that allows you to control other people. Yeah. And that's very tempting for a certain kind of individual, and those people aren't going to change. Um, they'll they'll be bandits when the when the come the revolution. They're not going to have any skills. They're going to be really jealous of their former lives, and they're going to be they're going to be. Um, road pirates without an official costume. But I digress. All right. More? Prudent status will then... Uh, blah, blah, uh, there is no need for actual libertarians to take on the role of the prudent statists encountering imprudent statists from within the state. Libertarians actually taking a hand in state reform is unnecessary, not to mention counterproductively corrupting to libertarians and tarnishing to the libertarian brand. Hmm. Period. I totally disagree. 
Totally disagree. I'm in this movement because of a libertarian presidential campaign. The Harry Brown campaign in the year 2000 is what brought me into this movement. Now, you could argue that something else down the line might have brought me in as well, and I don't know if it would have been a political campaign or something else, although I don't know what it would be, because almost everywhere, libertarians do nothing but politics. Mm -hmm. Either they sit around and complain, or they run a political candidate, or they do both. They'll sit around and complain during the off years, and then on the on years, they'll run a political candidate, get 2 to 3%, and then sit around and complain for another three years before they run another candidate. Uh huh. So... They're out of ideas. They don't seem to have any uh, any ideas. Maybe do some outreach, spread the ideas of freedom to people. But once they get the idea, then what do they do? If they haven't found out about the Free State Project, you know, it's like treading water out there. You're just trying not to drown in the sea of uh, of statism. Yeah, I believe if you if you take part, if you vote, then you really have no right to complain because you're signing up for whatever <laughs> outcome you get. You're That's signing not up true for at that all, process. Johnny Ray. There's no consent involved in voting. Well, what was the thing you said you wanted to throw out there? Some my my of, Robinson Crusoe yeah. scenario. Yeah, what yeah, is so, that? So, so uh, now I really wish Mark was here because um, he's part of the scenario. But be that as it may, I also would have liked him to be around when I was saying Fukuoka. I can he, play Mark. I can just get loud and start <laughs> shouting at you um, when you give me the scenario uh, coming up in hour number three. So That's what we'll do? Yes, it begins with the three of us on a spice clipper. All right, this sounds exciting already. Eight fifty-five, four fifty, free. How long have we been on the, the clipper for? Uh, to two weeks. Okay. We're going to come back with more here in moments. The Robinson Caruso scenario, whatever it will be, and your calls and thoughts. Welcome at 855-450-FREE. Hour 3 is next here on Free Talk Live. Hi, everyone. I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, now well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, look for the green box at your favorite store. I try to put myself out there, but it seems they're all the same, just telling me what I want to hear. Don't fret. You can find your car insurance soulmate. It's easy at Geico.com. You can pay your bill, manage your policy, and you could even save some major cash. If we could reach through the computer to pull your chair out for you and give you a kiss on the hand, we would. Because you deserve to be in a happy, healthy car insurance relationship. That's what life is all about. For a free rate quote, visit Geico.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Gerald W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, July 15th, 2014. Silver is trading at $20.96 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,310 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $623. Antiwar.com reports, Israel's security cabinet has agreed to meet today to discuss a new ceasefire plan on the Gaza Strip. The meeting was set to begin at 6 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time this morning. The plan is the first meaningful attempt to end a week of violence that has left nearly 200 Palestinians dead. 
Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh says he has yet to receive the details of the proposal, but that the group is prepared to discuss the ceasefire and doesn't want any further escalation of violence. He did, however, rule out any concessions on the part of the Palestinians. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is supporting the proposal as well and asking the cabinet to vote in favor of a ceasefire. There are some outspoken opponents of the deal, however. Deputy Defense Minister Danny Danen is not only against the ceasefire, but angry that it was even proposed, saying Egypt's proposal was a slap in the face to the citizens of Israel. Jewish home leader Naftali Bennett has also promised to vote against the deal, saying he wants a full-scale military invasion of the Strip and will accept nothing less. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. The New York Times reports the deal that Secretary of State John Kerry brokered to ease the Afghan election crisis with a sweeping audit of the vote was quietly built on an even more profound reshaping of the entire government system. American and Afghan officials confirmed Sunday the sides have agreed to gradually create an empowered prime minister post after years of an all-encompassing presidency. Officials said nearly a decade after American officials pushed a constitution that enshrined near dictatorial powers for the president, it is a tacit admission that changing to a more parliamentary system, a fraught undertaking at any time, is now seen as crucial to holding the country together after years of mounting political crisis and ethnic and factional hostilities. The change was a central goal for Abdullah Abdullah, who has brought the entire political system to the brink with accusations of rampant fraud and threats to form a breakaway government, according to officials who were close to the negotiations. They spoke on the condition of anonymity because the details had not yet been worked out. The candidate, who has declared the president after a complete vote audit in the coming weeks, would then appoint either the runner-up or that candidate's nominee to become a chief executive for the government, with powers to be agreed on later. Then, in the following two or three years, the Constitution would be amended to create a parliamentary democracy with a prime minister as a head of the government and a president as the head of state. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Opening a wallet is quick and easy, and for merchants, there are no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of transactions. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Antiwar.com reports, as ISIS continues to expand its control over the Deir Ezzur province in eastern Syria, they have turned their focus on oil fields and on expelling rival factions from the provincial capital. Some of the fighters chose to defect to ISIS outright, though others were killed or chased off. The local leader for al-Qaeda's Jabhat al-Nusra was slain, and photos of his body were posted online. The purge from Deir Ezzur means an influx of fighters into the area Area around Dira at the Jordan border, though it is unclear if this will have any impact on the ongoing fighting in that area. Rebels confirmed that ISIS is now in control of virtually the whole of Deir Ezzur province, including all oil fields, though they have still not yet taken the Syrian military airfield in that area. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. An alarming new study finds that people suffering from stress-related disorders react poorly to being trapped in underwater elevators. A tired 398-month-old throws a tantrum, and a little clay thing is purchased at an arts festival. And now an eerily perfect recap of this week's news. The Catholic Church reversed its long-held stance against gay marriage this week, 
after meeting Connecticut couple Tony and Craig. The vacationing pair dazzled the Pope and assorted clergy with their witty conversation and true loving affection for each other, leading Vatican officials to conclude that love is love and it's silly to put restrictions on it in this day and age. The Chinese people announced that they would be willing to forgive most of the United States' $1.16 trillion debt if Americans agreed to dress up in costumes and perform silly dances for them. Chinese officials encouraged U.S. citizens to wear sequined vests and prance around while slapping their big fat American tummies, promising that the more humiliating the performance, the more debt will be erased. In sports, NASCAR fans are deeply puzzled by a mysterious black family seen attending multiple races. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the third hour of the program. You, of course, can bring up anything that happens to be on your mind. We're talking about reforming the system. The article Johnny Ray is sharing with us from a guy over at LouRockwell.com. Not Dan Savage, but Dan... I haven't written it down, Johnny Ray. So it's Dan keeps... Sanchez. <laughs> Dan Sanchez. And Dan tells us that there is no need for actual libertarians to take on the role of the state, of the prudential state actor. Right, because the state's just going to go away because we come up with all kinds of good ideas and all of a sudden they see the light, right? Exactly. Uh, yeah, okay. So we can get into that here. But you had a Robinson Crusoe scenario that yeah. you wanted to describe. Yeah, now before I forget, I think Dan Sanchez, he believes that opinion can be when he was talking about that red line of potential resistance do you think that the people would put up some resistance if there was blanket gun confiscation throughout the country would I they don't do something maybe in a place like new hampshire but i mean we certainly saw that in connecticut people lined up obediently to turn in their firearms yes they did and get licensed what about reassigning every all the parents children to other parents would they do you think they might Say something about that. Maybe stand up and do something about that. You know, I uh, I forget who it was that said it, Johnny Ray, but I liked it when I heard it. It was, and I'm paraphrasing probably pretty poorly, but something to the effect of uh, Americans will finally rise up once their television is taken away from them. <laughs> and I don't see that happening because television is a very good tool for those who are in control, right? I mean, television, uh, mainstream media. Is a great way to keep people unproductive, to keep them distracted from what's really going on. So I can't imagine they're going to be taking away the TV sets anytime soon. Uh, I'm not a parent, but I I think I would believe that if the the if Obama got on TV and said we're we're having a children reassignment program mm -hmm. where everybody's children are going to be reassigned to everybody's parents, people wouldn't accept that. Oh, it's so, fun! It's like wife swap. So what Dan Sanchez is saying is that education can bring mm -hmm. people to that point on other things that are fundamentally just as wrong, like an income tax or a war on drugs or something. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to fire a shot to, to, to change opinions. Or, and, and voting is, is, is taking part in that system that's built on violence. Let me give you the Robinson Crusoe scenario. So the year is 1805. You, Mark, and I are all on a passenger ship bound for Java, and we run into a storm, and the ship goes down, all hands lost, except uh, we are, are, you know, effectively lost. We don't die. The three of us wake up on an island. And okay. We, 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 we're stuck there. We create an economy where um, um, Mark paints sunsets, and uh, he trades those. Ian, you hunt, <laughs> you hunt boars on the island. This is already very unrealistic. <laughs> and uh, I, d I dredge for mole crabs, and I, hmm. and I spin coconut silk. All right. Uh, we do this for a while. It's somewhat satisfying. We're alive. You know, we can converse and stuff. We stay. We we keep in touch. Okay. And then you and Mark approach me one day, and Mark's he can't he can't even really look me in the eye. But Ian, you say. I think that in order for us to get off this island, we really need to direct our efforts, and we need somebody who can give us some focus. So what I, <laughs> what I'm proposing, is that um, is that all of us surrender 50% of our produce, and then I will put it to some use in order to help us transcend our island lifestyle here and help us get off the island and this is great <laughs> I, i'm i'm not forcing this on you uh -huh. i'm putting it to a vote um 
So let's let's vote. Mark, he doesn't like the idea. So when the vote he doesn't want to give up half his stuff. Yeah, yeah, he does. He okay. doesn't like your idea. So you say, all right, are you ready? I vote for it. Mark says, I vote against it. Mm-hmm. Now, what about you? I, if I want to, I can vote myself into freedom by voting against it. Yeah. But personally, I think it would be a lot more healthy for all three of us for me to just laugh and laugh and laugh, turn around, walk (laughs) away, and as you see me fading into the distance, you'll see me throw my head back every so often and roar (laughs) with laughter. What's your point, Johnny My point is that in my Robinson Crusoe scenario, were I to vote, then no good would come of it, even Mm -hmm. though I would be voting myself into freedom. I would just, that would be sort of like planting a seed, and it would be giving you the idea that we can try this again. I would be supporting democracy, which in and of itself is neither good nor bad, and it's unhealthy for for people, for saps like you, to think that democracy... Yeah, but your scenario doesn't, it doesn't hold, I mean, in, in comparison to reality, right? Um, first of all, it's a ridiculous scenario in the first place, obviously. But beyond that, even if it were possible, um, I don't have an enforcement bureau. I mean, I, first of all, I wouldn't do these things that you're suggesting in the first place. But if I were that person on the island that you well, were talking my- about, um, I don't have the enforcement uh, bureaucracy to come after you if you decide you want to opt out. Well, Mark has already sort of fallen for the idea that voting is okay. So if you get voted to be our supreme leader, maybe he'll be your enforcement agency. I see where you're coming from there. Uh, But regardless, today we have the enforcement bureaucracy and the police are more than willing to come to wherever you are and take you and put you in a cage if the people in charge of the reins of power decide that that's a good place for you to be because you're Mm -hmm. too much trouble Uh, Johnny Ray, with your anti-voting ideas, we're just going to lock you up and put you in a cage so people can't hear what you have to say anymore. Um, And we know that in the situations where people have not voted uh, in different towns around the United States, I always, whenever there's one of these stories, if I find it, I talk about it on the air because I think it's instructive that, look, you've got elections where people aren't voting at all. Not even the candidates are voting for themselves in these elections that I'm talking about. Uh I mean, no one, not even a bureaucrat, goes out and votes for themselves or votes in anybody. Usually you can count on the bureaucrats to show up and vote because it's their system, right? Like they have the incentive to continue perpetuating it, so they'll always have the incentive to show up and vote, unless, of course, you can somehow change the minds of the bureaucrats, all of them, into believing that, the system is unnecessary and that they should just stop supporting it and stop going out to vote for it. So even if you could get the bureaucrats to stop voting, which in most places you won't be able to do, but in the towns where no one has voted, they're usually relatively small towns, you know, probably less than 50 or 100 in population to where it's certainly possible that the politician was too busy to go and vote and no one else did or the bureaucrats were too busy. I don't know. Nobody voted. And you know what happened? What? The government's still there. Uh huh. You know why? Because people kept paying. So it didn't matter that they didn't vote. Voting is, as you pointed out earlier, and I agree with you, relatively insignificant on the scale of things you can do for freedom. But not voting isn't going to bring about freedom. It never has. There's no example that shows that not voting brings about any more freedom. In fact, all it brought about in these towns where nobody voted was another, uh, you know, another four years or two years of rule by politicians. This, these politicians would have been appointed politicians in that case. And I, I don't know what the exact rules would be in each political jurisdiction, but, you know, if nobody uh, wins an election, then somebody fills that seat. Either it's the previous holder or the city council will appoint someone, usually one of their buddies, to fill the seats. That's what happens here in Keene whenever a city councilor in the mid of their term decides they're not, you know, they want to quit for some reason. The seat goes up for appointing by the city council. So not even a vote in that particular case. So not voting doesn't result in no government. There's no example that it does. And even if the non-voters were educated, in this case, you could argue this is just an accident. People just didn't vote, and not not enough people voted. But even if they had purposefully not voted, it wouldn't make a difference 
so long as they're all paying taxes at the end of the year. As long as they keep paying into the system, as long as they keep obeying these politicians, nothing will change and no votes will matter either way. Your example doesn't prove that their not voting didn't make a difference. Maybe it didn't eliminate government where they were. I suspect that... Well, that's what the that, that sentiment there that there that that did something, and that that's that colors the way that community is. Maybe, but uh, isn't the viewpoint of the non-voting advocates that all we have to do is dry up voting, and then the system will stop? It's ridiculous. I, I it I, gives voting more power I than think it it's actually possible. has. We'll come back with more here in moments, and your calls are welcome on this topic or anything goes here on Free Talk Live at eight fifty five four fifty free. One little joint supplement. You know this powerful little pill is great for your joints. It even has powerful benefits to help increase your mobility and flexibility. But the joint supplements of today are sadly incomplete because they don't give you the joint relief you're looking for. Until now. Introducing the complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. It's the number one selling joint supplement at GNC. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-608-9424. Instaflex provides powerful, effective joint relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. Prove it to yourself by calling now for your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and CVS. But you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-608-9424. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample, 1-800-608-9424. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years, hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call one 800 68 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you're going to explain? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot reach Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait a minute. Now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you're scared of your property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. 
You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about anything. All you have to do is dial in here toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. In fact, we're going to go to Skype next, but first want to tell you about ProXPN. If you care about online privacy, you need to know about ProXPN. They are a virtual private network, and they're global. They encrypt your online data. All you have to do is go and download the software for free from proxpn.com slash FTL. It's available for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. Linux users, you'll be all set. You don't even have to download software. It's just a little bit of a different setup for Linux. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Get started there. You can use their free account to test it out. And when you're ready to upgrade your service to premium, you can do that for 20% off the price of the regular price of their premium account. That breaks the price down to 5 bucks a month when you buy their annual plan at ProXPN.com slash FTL. With the premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world to which you can connect as well as the ability to privately torrent. Plus, ProXPN helps you get around regional blocks as well as blocks maybe at a workplace or a school, for instance. Very handy stuff. ProXPN.com slash FTL. They protect your privacy because you are encrypted. Your internet service provider no longer knows what you're doing online. They can't keep logs of what you're doing, which they're currently likely doing to you, logging everything you do, every visit, uh, every website you visit. Every search term you enter, for in some cases as long as five years, you can stop that from happening by encrypting yourself through ProXPN at ProXPN.com slash FTL code. FTL20 Nathan is with us in Texas on Skype. Nathan, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Johnny Ray. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Hey, what's Great. on your mind tonight, Nathan? Um, well, first, before I uh, comment on the vote, I want to ask you real quick, before you were... Uh, in the Harry Brown, or you knew about the Harry Brown campaign? Were you a a, a ponytail punk rocker, or Me? something like that? Uh, I heard a rumor. No. I heard a rumor that you might have had a ponytail. I did have time. a ponytail, yeah, but I wasn't a punk rocker. I was more of a a metal uh, metalhead, if you want to use that term. Oh, okay. Well, I, the reason I'm asking is I was curious. Did you go to the end of the Harry Brown thing? Like, you really wanted him to win? Like, it was that was that the idea? No, and then once I don't he think didn't I... win. I don't think I had any beliefs that Harry Brown would win. You're okay, talking about because... the presidential candidate for the Libertarian Party uh, in the year 2000 and 1996. Yeah, I was thinking that it's it's actually valuable for some people to have an experience like that where they want to get someone elected for you know to, to with the freedom message and then have them fail because that's very strong evidence that you can't actually do something to change the system. I think the system as it is is antithetical to our ideas, uh, is antithetical to the non-aggression principle. And if you ever get politics and politicians as they are today to, if you ever get our political system around to the non-aggression principle, it'll be, it'll be, you know, it, 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 it will have already happened basically in the wider society before well, that's it hits politics. No, no, that's, I agree, Johnny Ray, that's absolutely true. Politicians tend to fall way behind the times as far as, you know, look at the cannabis issue, for instance. Here we are finally in, uh, you know, 2014, and we're just now seeing cannabis legalized in only two of the 50 states. People thought this was going to happen back in the 1970s. It never ended up panning out. And now finally, here it is, you know, decades after the fact. This should have happened a long time ago. But politics move slow. Politicians are not leaders. They're not people who, even though the media calls them leaders all the time, they're just a bunch of followers. They just want to pander to uh, certain crowds so they can protect their political strength. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I can understand where you're coming from, Nathan, that watching politicians of a liberty-oriented viewpoint fail can certainly be instructive. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. I've seen enough failures to know that, uh, for the most part, bringing the ideas of liberty to the political game is a waste of time in most places. 
but not New Hampshire. In New Hampshire, people who love the ideas of liberty can win elections. They've been winning as Republicans and Democrats. Those very people have been proposing legislation that doesn't always win, but sometimes it goes through. Sometimes it gets modified a little bit, but sometimes it makes it through. I mean, there's some real uh, noteworthy legislation that has happened up here. One of the more recent wins was the uh, the prohibition on New Hampshire police using the, the license plate scanners. New Hampshire is the only state now of all the 50 states that does not have police authorized to use the license plate scanning devices that are apparently frequently used in other places. We don't have that here. So the police, they wanted it. What does it do? The police, it's a it's a device that actually allows you can mount, mount it on a police car. You can mount it on a, like a roadside stand or something like that. It's just hit everybody that's driving by. Or the police car can just, you know, scan plates as they're driving around. Mm-hmm. Anyway, the idea is the the device will scan the plate that'll compare the plate against the database and find out if the person's wanted or if they have tickets or, you know, whatever. Give, okay, so it's like a it's it's basically sitting there. Uh, passive is not the right word, but the police officer is passive, and it's and it'll it'll maybe give him an alarm or something. Something if, like that. If yeah. A person of interest goes by. That's my basic understanding of the technology. It may actually be more complicated than uh, than I understand, but it's a privacy invading measure. It's a police state uh, invasive measure that allows them to you know take more, collect more information, and then use that information against you. Mm-hmm. New Hampshire's the only place where that's been shot down and that was shot down due to the efforts of liberty oriented not if, even if they're not perfect you know these guys may not be a plus rated reps from the new hampshire liberty alliance but they might be b or they might be a minus or they might be you know b minus or whatever they're voting in the right way often enough to make a difference for the ideas of freedom and some of them are downright principled individuals like mark warden who we mentioned earlier uh, these are people who are bringing the ideas of liberty to, liberty to the table in a place where historically in other states they have not been at the table. And uh, that's resulted in things happening. The knife ban was repealed here in New Hampshire. This is an old uh, win for Free Staters. Free State Project participant Jen Coffey was the one who sponsored that legislation. She held that thing all the way, you know, held its hand all the way through the ugly, horrible, slow, just arduous political process. But it, it passed. It got signed. And the knife bans in the whatever prohibitions that New Hampshire had had on knives in the past, those are gone. You want to carry a butterfly yeah. knife? You want to carry a switchblade? You can do it in New Hampshire, from what I understand, because of the efforts of Free State Project participants. And that can result in fewer people being put in handcuffs, Johnny Ray, because I know that uh, our old friend Brad Jardis, when he was a police officer, he arrested a guy for a violation of probation for having a knife. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know they're, they do uh, they can make a difference here. Uh, go ahead, Nathan. Oh well, I was going to ask: Did you even get that far when you were in Florida? Because I know you get far as far as what you say a lot. When I was in Florida, I couldn't. When I was in Florida, I couldn't advance liberty at all. But uh, do you mean like you could? Like the law never even got to uh, got to a proposal. It was just like you would hand out flyers and you couldn't even get a candidate elected. Is that was it like that? Well, yeah, there was never any laws proposed by the libertarians in Florida because they didn't have any political uh, capital whatsoever. Um, so you got they couldn't win an election. You were, sty- you were stymied at the voter level. Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, the libertarians, the best they could claim in Florida and pretty much nationwide was uh, Soil and Water Conservation Board or Dog Catcher or something like that. I am not uh, exaggerating there. So, no, they had no political power whatsoever from which to springboard any kind of proposals at all. And in uh, elections, in a three-way race, the Libertarian would be lucky to get 2%. 3% would be a major uh, victory for a Libertarian. Ian, I don't think not voting is a virtue so much as I think that voting is evil. You think voting is evil? Well, Nathan, if you want to answer that, you can hang on. We'll bring you back, and you can get on the air with us as well. Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. 
Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a Droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your Droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the Droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. When you're coping with bad news and the news media come calling, and they will, don't clam up. As notorious political figures find out the hard way, the cover-up can be worse than the crime. So get out in front of unfavorable news about your company, your group, or organization, or yourself. The sooner you confront a negative story, the sooner it will be over. Responding as quickly to negative stories as you do to positive ones enhances your credibility. Hiding embarrassing information or lying will do more damage than damage control. Never stonewall. Tell your side of the story, use specifics, and detail what corrective action has already been taken. Respond in kind. If the issue is emotional, don't sound like a cold, unemotional Mr. Spock. For more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at FFF at FFF.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. People, they like to complain about the idea that the money is taxpayer dollars. It's not really true, is it? I mean, they were your dollars until you yeah. gave them to the government. Right. Now they're their dollars, <laughs> and they're going to do whatever the hell they damn well want to do with them. You're right. It is still your money in that if a thief comes and steals money from you... It doesn't cease to be yours just because yeah. they stole it. You still have a claim on that, but you don't have the ability to control the thief unless you actually have him in your custody. Mm. So that thief is going to go out and buy a big screen TV or do whatever, you know, spend it on coke and whores or whatever it is that thieves do uh, with the money that they steal. And you That's what the politicians really, do with it. Yeah, you, you know, you can call the thief on the phone and say, I told you not to spend that money on whores! <laughs> and he's going to say, well, thanks for the input. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, Noted. I appreciate that. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live with you in the studio tonight. We'll take your calls about anything. It's Ian here. And Johnny Ray. And Johnny Ray, the uh, anti-voting zealot who, even in the face of evidence, Overwhelming evidence. of hard evidence that uh, voting, at least in New Hampshire, has resulted in liberty-oriented people getting elected and liberty-oriented that has resulted in liberty-oriented legislation being passed to reduce the role of the state in people's lives. Um, despite all that, you went and you said in the la- the end of the last segment that voting is evil. I want to continue that conversation with you, Johnny Ray, and also invite you to join in here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. And don't forget uh, that you can help support Free Talk Live. Go to promote.freetalklive.com and you'll find different ideas for getting Free Talk Live into more ears around the world. Because whatever your thoughts on voting, Free Talk Live covers the issues of freedom from different perspectives. And we give people the opportunity to think about things in a different way than they normally would. And helping spread this show is definitely a way to help the education factor that we were both agreeing on 
earlier, Johnny Ray, is getting people, getting these ideas out there into the public. Uh, we're on over 150 radio stations from coast to coast today. In fact, uh, we're actually we actually cracked 155 today, as a matter of fact. So very cool. Uh, welcoming KBYR in Anchorage. We'll uh, officially welcome them this weekend because they're a weekend only affiliate. But it's great to be back on in Alaska. Uh, but bringing the ideas of freedom to the radio waves, to the internet. And uh, you can help us uh, promote the show by going to promote.freetalklive.com. Maybe just share your favorite episode of the week on Facebook. Share our weekly digest, perhaps. A nice way to sum up two weeks or just sum up a week's worth of Free Talk Live into about 75 minutes. Kind of like a highlight reel that our friend and producer Benjamin Bartholomew puts together on a weekly basis. It's all part of our podcast. You can find it at freetalklive.com. As we continue here, uh, we've got Nathan still with us. Nathan, you're uh, back on Free Talk Live. Before Johnny Ray goes into telling us uh, why voting is evil, I wanted to make sure you had a chance to get uh, your thoughts out. Right. So uh, I'm reminded of this quote by Herbert Spencer. Well, it's not a quote. I'm just going to paraphrase him. He said that in a, in a democratic electoral system, there are only a few possibilities. Either you voted for the person in power or the person or party in power, you voted against that person or you didn't vote at all. Mm-hmm. So in the latter case, you often hear the response, well, if you didn't vote, then you can't complain. But I think that's I think that statement is as ridiculous as the statement that if you voted, you can't complain. Right. I, and I agree because it's this the problem here is that no matter um, no matter what you do, you're sort of agreeing to the system. It, it's kind of reminiscent to that circular social contract reasoning I called in about a few weeks ago. How are you agreeing to the system no matter what you do? I don't agree with that statement either. Even if you don't vote? That's the argument that we're – that's the argument that we're being given because if you vote for the person in power, you're assumed to support everything they do. If you voted against them, you still consent into the process, and you didn't vote at all. Well, you, you, you didn't vote, so you can't complain. So so basically there's sort of no way for you to to. Uh, withdraw your consent from the system in this scenario no matter uh, that's that's because voting doesn't have anything to do with consent and this is another argument of the non-voting crowd is that oh you're voting that means you agree with the system no that doesn't mean that at all you if you want to jump to that conclusion you know you're free to jump to as many conclusions as you want to i know you don't agree with the system but i think that that you you're supporting the system when you vote it's ridiculous especially if i'm voting for candidates who don't support the system who openly advocate for ending the system or uh, you know, de toothing or defanging. Who usually uh, the system. lose? Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Well, but I'm in a- New Hampshire, not as often. And in New Hampshire, oh. freedom-oriented candidates can win. And I understand if you're in the the other 49 states, quit voting. There's no point. The libertarians can't win there. <laughs> so you might as well give up and do something else. But if you're in New Hampshire, okay, you go, you vote once every two years, not a big deal. Or twice, you can always vote in the primary as well. Go ahead. Uh, well, well, I guess yeah. I would go ahead. Nathan. I would go a little. I would go a little farther. So, sorry. Go ahead, Nathan. You're good. Uh, I, I would go a little farther and say, even if you do vote for a candidate who is largely opposed to freedom, it can still be considered self-defensive voting in my mind. Like, for example, if, um, like, for example, say you're you're worried about your property taxes going up. I guess this is kind of like a New Hampshire thing: high property taxes. And there's one candidate who. Who, let's say he supports droning uh, people in Afghanistan, but he's also going to lower your property taxes. In that situation, I would say it's self-defensive to vote because you're you're trying to pick the least of uh, the two options that's going to be aggressing against you. Yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from there, although generally if I find somebody distasteful enough, I won't vote for them. It's very rare that I'll vote for the less the lesser of two evils. And if I ever do that, I'm very cognizant of what it is that I'm doing as opposed to voting for a liberty-oriented candidate who I don't have disagreements with or minor, minor disagreements with. Uh, I don't have the same blood on my hands feeling. I tend to not vote in in elections where there isn't a clear liberty-oriented choice uh, because I don't really believe that voting for the lesser of two evils really does much to reduce evil in the world. I think that when you vote right. for the lesser of two evils, you end up with evil, and the evil focuses on doing evil, not the good things you hoped they were going to do. I voted for Ron Paul, and and you'd, you'd have when? to say that I voted for him in the primaries of 2008, right, or 2007. Okay. And, but not in 2012 or 2011. Right, right. And, uh, you know, Ron Paul is a 
is a quote principled libertarian. He's against Mexicans coming in uh, and that's getting not jobs. Really true. That's not. I don't well, believe that's true. It was at one time. I know. I think that he was. I think he was pandering for votes in that case because we did kind of corner him on that one on Free Talk Live, and his answer was decent. You know. He, uh, yeah. If you have a country, then then you have borders. So Ron Paul is not. At that time, he was not arguing for the dissolution of the United States. So as long as not. you have a a country, then you got to have borders, I guess. Look, I loved the Ron Paul campaign. I loved being able to get behind a, a guy uh, financially who was getting in national debates and saying things like legalize heroin. I mean, I just loved supporting <laughs> somebody coming from a iconoclastic perspective like that. I mean, even if you didn't agree with voting, I still think giving money to the Ron Paul campaign was a, was a decent way to bring people to the ideas of liberty because we know that's what happened, wasn't that? No, that wasn't what happened with you, was it? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was. And and I I'm kind of have some nostalgia for Ron Paul's money bomb. I gave him some money on that oh, you day. Did? Okay, and that was that was exciting. Was that the blimp thing? The Ron Paul blimp? It was. That may have been rolled into it somehow, yeah. but the the two weren't um, one and the same. But there you go. I mean, there's another example, well, Johnny Ray. I mean, you would think that with uh, with your history, you'd have more of an appreciation for assisting with liberty-oriented campaigns. I mean, if it if it weren't for Ron Paul running in 2008, would you be here right now? You took the words right out of my mouth. That's, that's why I was going to ask. Thanks, Nathan, for your call tonight. I appreciate it. The chain of events that brought me up here was me becoming a member of the Libertarian News, uh, the Libertarian Party, receiving their newsletter, mm -hmm. seeing a Free State Project ad in the newsletter. Hold on, was this after the Ron Paul thing? This was in 2000 or 2001 or 2002 or something, so it was okay, before Okay, so that. you were involved before Ron Paul. Yes. Ah, all right. Yes, I knew the Republicans were not for me. I'd grown up listening to Rush, but um, yep. I felt like that— As did I. That, uh, pri that a private military would be better and had some, some ideas like that. And I started looking on the Internet for stuff like that, and I found the Libertarian Party. So mm -hmm. I saw an ad for the Free State Project, and I signed up, and I forgot about it. And I was looking for good podcasts, and I saw Free Talk Live. And they one of their sponsors was the Free State Project, which, which blew my mind. Mm -hmm. And I started listening to Free Talk Live. Um, and then Ron Paul did very poorly in the primaries here, I think, or at least much, much, much not fine. as good as I thought he was going to do. He, he did fine. I mean, but he, yes, he, a lot of people had ex, uh, inflated expectations. About that. He he uh, he was beaten, I think, by some people that I thought were silly people, hmm. maybe Newt Gingrich and that and that type. No, I, don't, I don't remember. Yeah, nor do They're I. All forgettable. But it was so bad, according to me, or so much below my expectations that I said, I got to go. I got to get up there. And so I came up. And after I voted for Ron Paul and watched what happened to him, I said to myself, that's the last time I vote. Would you prefer, Johnny Ray, that uh, that the others in the Free State Project uh, were to follow your lead and stop voting and not, not run for office? Do you think that would make more would that would that make us more effective yes a, i would i would i would prefer that they stop voting and you think that would make things more effective if people just didn't vote at all yes i want to hear more and also about why voting is evil when we come back with more free talk live business owners listen up give me an l give me another l give me a c what's that spell incorporation protection success incorporate your business L-L-C. If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at herbalhealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. 
Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, Hootia and Metabolic Complex, and ProMetabolic, all on sale now. Also, the Anti-Parasite Intestinal Freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus Stevia Liquid Sweetener and the Super Enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage wanna... and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, well, and the I Social Security Administration of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. Fair, and of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come you to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want, even in these remaining moments. There's enough time for your call and your thoughts. I want to find out from Johnny Ray why he thinks voting is evil and throw a couple other ideas, scenarios out there for him uh, here in a moment. We'll continue with that. Also want to invite you to our website. Go and get interactive and do it all for free at freetalklive.com. And know the Free Talk Live is brought to you by Keenvention. Keenvention is coming up this year on October 31st through November 2nd. That's Halloween weekend, uh, so it'll be a spooky Keenvention this year. Look forward to seeing you there. It's going to be an intimate event, as it was last year. Last year was its first year, and I didn't know how it was going to go. I didn't know what to expect, and it turned out really great. I enjoyed my time at Keenvention. Johnny Ray, you were there hosting one of the panels. Did you have a good time? Yes, I did. It was a warm, cozy affair. Would you go back? Yes, I would. Keenvention.info is where you can go to get your tickets right now. I've been dragging my feet on raising the uh, the price. There's an early bird discount of 40 bucks per ticket or Bitcoin equivalent, and that discount is still in effect until I get around to changing it and raising it to 60 bucks for the regular pre-sale price. So you still have time to sneak in and get your tickets at the early bird rate for this year's Keenvention, which is coming up here in just a matter of months. Go to keenvention.info. While you're on the website, you can actually go back in time and you can look at all the videos from the original Keenvention. You can watch Johnny Ray's panel about uh, the old school movers. You can watch all the other panels about the legislation process and the legislators that we've had there. And they were telling their stories about how to make a difference and actually how to have an impact for the ideas of freedom here in New Hampshire. And of course, there's the civil disobedience panel with which you and I, Johnny Ray, would have no disagreement, I don't think. We both support things like civil disobedience. I support outside-of-the-system uh, action. 
I mean, I'm a big fan of that stuff. I like it when people do street theater. I like it when people do disobedience, when they non-cooperate, when they hold video cameras, when they save people from getting parking tickets. I like all that stuff. Um, but I also like it when bad legislation gets stopped at the state house. Now, you had said that you thought that uh, all free state project participants should not vote. Yes. Um, so that would presumably mean that you don't think they should run for political office either. Right. Would I you would also, have to say that, yeah. Would you also say that they should not, even if they do not run for political office and do not vote, that they should also not lobby the politicians? They should also not call They can communicate with communicate. the politicians. Okay. Yes, they're allowed to do that. Okay. But um, <laughs> if you look at different uh, legislation, like, for instance, I was giving you the, the fact that New Hampshire doesn't have the, uh, the, the license plate scanners. The police here cannot use license plate scanning technology. In other states, in I think every other state, they can. And you had some very persuasive individuals from a liberty viewpoint talking about this issue on the state house floor. These guys, believe it or not, haven't all made up their minds when they're going in to vote on this stuff. They're getting last-minute voting recommendations the uh, from their political party and the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. So they're being given information by interest groups who care about freedom, but also the politicians who have been elected – uh, who care about freedom, they're on the state house floor talking about the ideas of liberty, talking about marijuana legalization, ending the war on drugs. Very principled ideas are being thrown out down there. And you're saying you think that we shouldn't have that? Yeah. Um, at, I'll, just, I'll just lay it out. At the heart of it, Ian, the state, as a, as a, as a holder of the monopoly on violence and as mm -hmm. a coercive organization, it's coercive at its root. It has always oh, yeah. been coercive. It's corrupt to the core. If no it doubt. wasn't coercive, it wouldn't be the state. Correct. Is an evil institution. I'm with you. And the polling places are a component part of it. So I think you should stay away from them. You should you should distance yourself from every part of the state as much as as much as possible. You should not mm. soil yourself. <laughs> you should not roll around in the state and get it stink all over you. And so what you're saying is that You'd be fine with, uh, let's say, none of these people had run for political office ever in New Hampshire. They'd all followed your advice, Johnny Ray, and they, they figured they'd stay home, maybe call the politicians every now and then since Johnny's okay with you calling the politicians and talking to them. Uh, but they themselves would not have run, so therefore they would not have sponsored liberty-oriented uh, legislation. Therefore, their votes would not have been present to vote against anti-liberty-oriented le legislation. So therefore, you'd feel okay. If the police could then use license plate scanning technology, that uh, medical marijuana never would have passed. Uh, you'd be all right with that, Johnny Ray. You would cheer that on as a, as a point of fact. Of course not. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Let's go to James. He's in Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, James. James in Arizona going once. James in Arizona going once. You're not playing with me, are you, Ian? I'm sorry? I voted for Ron Paul for president in 1988 before you could even spell Freeman, Ian. <laughs> oh, yeah? Okay. Well done. Oh, yeah. And speaking of not being a libertarian, Johnny, uh, the reason why I say that your friend Ian is progressive is because truth is not a value to him. But smearing people, he does get his rocks off. So I should like to respond. I should like to respond to your saying that I support foreign wars, Ian, since I'm not for the non-aggression principle. Yep. And the wars that I've ever, ever spoken to you with about all had something in common. They were declared on the U.S. and United States of America. United States of America didn't start them. And about me being anti-immigrant and believing in restrictive borders— the only thing I've ever said on Free Talk Live regarding migration, minister, is I quoted Leviticus 1933, and you call yourself a minister, and you had to quote, no idea what I was talking about, uh, that famous passage about love thy neighbor as thyself from the Torah. And thirdly, you say I, I support uh, high taxes. I've never mentioned taxes on your show, ever. But I did support Steve Forbes' plan of a flat tax, flat income tax, and I still can't believe the Republican Party didn't adopt that as a platform. So just to be clear, you uh, you do you do not support the uh, the war in Afghanistan or Iraq. Uh, 
the war in Afghanistan. Is that Johnny Ray talking to me? Because I have one more point I want to respond to about Ian smearing of me when I all these things were. So lies we don't. Well, this isn't me. just where you get to lecture from a from a podium. I'd like to have a conversation. You smeared me, and I'd like so, to respond to the fourth point, and then I'd be happy. There's four things you smeared me about, of which I never. Okay, I don't even remember on one of those. Court. One of the three. I know, but go of ahead. Course, I know you smoke too much dope. I know that you don't remember, and you don't care about truth either. Like I said, you don't care about the truth. Amen. But you do get your walks off about smearing. Three. People. Are you going to get to your point, James, or are you going to keep yelling? And the fourth thing is I said you said I support bigger government. Oh, really? Okay. Johnny mm-hmm. Ray, yeah, the Al-KKK of Southwest Asia declared war on us. They were a non-state actor, and they took down two buildings and murdered over thousands of people. But I do remember you saying that was a legitimate terrorist attack, which makes you scum in my mind. You want to, And about Iraq, yep, I actually, now that you mentioned it, you want me to talk about the Iraq war? I'm glad Saddam Hussein is 6,000 feet under, and so is his bastard sons. And um, Iraq was doing a lot better after the insurgency was defeated for the most part, and uh, Iraqis came to realize that we're not the bad guys, and the monster that was ruling them was even worse. Didn't you and, just um, a moment ago, James, say that you only supported the wars what? that had been declared on the United States? I said of the wars that I'd ever discussed on Free Talk Live, you uh, stole them. You so then it wasn't incorrect for me yeah. to say that you were a warmonger. No, it's not incorrect. Right. No, I'm not You're a warmonger. warmonger. Goodbye. Goodbye. 855 free. That is the Pro XPN toll free lines. Johnny Ray, any thoughts on uh, on that? I'm I just glad that I haven't yet had to answer for myself. To James. <laughs> That's because all he uh, ever does is call and talk about things that happened in the past. And so uh, he never gets a chance to say anything fresh because he doesn't seem to care about saying anything fresh. Anyway, back to voting as evil, Johnny Ray. Right. So, uh, so you're you're accepting the idea that if people were to do what you suggest here in New Hampshire, that there would probably be less freedom. Maybe. Um, what's happening in Colorado and Washington with the weed, um, with with the the weed movement there? Far fewer people are being arrested. I can tell you that. Are we creating some pot barons over there? Some politically connected agricultural firms that are going to run the pot, run pot sales in that state like the state of new hampshire runs all the liquor sales here i I don't know i I don't know that that's necessarily a step in the right direction i I feel like it is whoa wait a minute i mean i i stop thousands of arrests to say that that's a step in the right direction yeah it definitely is i mean there are thousands of people who are not being arrested this year who would have been arrested had the uh, cannabis prohibition continued in Colorado and Washington. Yeah, maybe. Those are thousands of lives who have been improved by the fact that they have not been interrupted by an arrest and a kidnapping and a caging. Similar outcomes could have come about different ways. The the police have discretion, right? <laughs> yes, Johnny Ray. I would love for the police to get in touch with their humanity, find their discretion, and utilize it every time we're talking about a drug user. But you and I know that's not very likely now is it it's more likely that you're going to change a law and then the police will stop enforcing it i wish we had more time for tonight but we don't we'll be back tomorrow online in the meantime at freetalklive.com and maybe next week we'll do some johnny ray game of the week cool all right see you tomorrow listen you've heard the commercials before whether you owe fifteen thousand or 15 million in tax debt to the irs or state we can help on a never-ending payment plan Penalties and interest killing you? Missing tax returns? Being garnished or levied? Not a problem. If you qualify, we can remove levies and garnishments within days or even hours of hiring our firm. If you've been summonsed, or even worse, receiving tax warrants in the mail, call right now. Are you a business owner with back payroll taxes? Is the IRS or state threatening to close your business you've worked so hard to build? Protect yourself and your business. Even if you've tried in the past, new guidelines could potentially qualify you today. So what are you waiting for? We can take that tax monkey off your back. Call the tax monkey now. 800-281-6030. 800-281-6030. 800-281-6030. That's 800-281-6030. Imagine for a moment 
a radio program, the most personal of mediums that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live has 